presentation on the magnetic uh, compass and uh, in this presentation uh, we are going to learn about the basic concepts of magnetism and the magnetic properties or the magnetic uh, effect uh, shown by the earth or the earth's magnetism our magnetic compass uh, consists of a magnet and uh, it is based on these two things to give us a directional reference so understanding these two provides us the basis on which the magnetic compass functions so let's first go into the basic concept uh, related to magnetism magnetism is a physical phenomena by which some materials like iron nickel and cobalt are attracted towards magnets these materials which are attracted towards a magnet are also known as ferromagnetic materials now these materials can be converted into magnets themselves also and to convert these ferromagnetic materials into a magnet we can use two different methods there are two techniques or two methods which are available to us to convert a ferromagnetic material into a magnet these two methods are number 1 permanent magnetism or by use of permanent magnets and number 2 induced magnetism that is through the presence of a magnetic field we will discuss both these techniques both these uh, methods by which these ferromagnetic materials can be converted into a magnet one by one so beta everybody is okay are you able to see the slide hear me speaking especially the new joiners Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, beta. All right. Great. Moving ahead, then. So, uh, you will be providing us with all these notes. Let's first uh, discuss the first method by which we can convert a ferromagnetic material into a magnet. The first method is by use of permanent magnets. now for making a magnet from a ferromagnetic material by using a permanent magnet the material like uh, iron is uh, stroked in one particular direction as you can see in this diagram we have a iron bar this is a non magnet this is not a magnet this is a simple iron bar and we want to convert it into a magnet so what we do is we get hold of a permanent magnet you can see the rod which is held in the hand is a permanent magnet and then we move that permanent magnet in a particular direction you see the dotted line with the arrows shows the motion of the permanent magnet and we are stroking this iron bar in this particular way repeatedly now once you repeat this process at least 40 to 50 times uh the iron bar then starts to behave like a permanent magnet itself and it starts showing the magnetic properties so using this method you can convert a ferromagnetic material into a magnet and uh, this magnetism which is acquired by the material then is permanent magnetism what do we mean by permanent magnetism permanent magnetism means that after this process is done after that even if you remove the parent magnet which was used to magnetize the iron bar if you remove it and take it away the iron bar will continue to behave its magnetic properties it will continue to show or exhibit its magnetic properties 
now that magnetism has been permanently acquired by the iron bar and it is called as permanent magnetism so let's now go into the second method which can be used to make a magnet or to convert a ferromagnetic material into a magnet this method is known as induced magnetism so magnetism can also be generated by placing a ferromagnetic material in a magnetic field now as you can see in this particular diagram we have some iron nails and some of the paper clips which are clinging or they are attracted towards this bar magnet all the iron nails and paper clips actually have become magnets here which are attracting other nails and paper clips close to them if you look carefully the first nail closest to the magnet or the first paper clip closest to the magnet is attracted towards the permanent magnet but all subsequent paper clips or all subsequent nails have also started showing magnetic behavior because these are attracting other nails under them so these have started showing magnetic behavior because of the presence of a magnetic field if the magnetic field is removed the magnetism of the nails as well as these paper clips is going to disappear and all the nails and paper clips are going to fall down so this kind of magnetism is known as induced magnetism and it is generated by the presence of a magnetic field if we place a ferromagnetic material in a magnetic field it starts behaving like a magnet now going little more deeper into the induced uh, magnetism the strength of the induced magnet that means how powerful or how strong this nail magnet will be depends upon two factors what are these two factors one the strength of the inducing magnetic field that means how powerful this parent bar magnet is the more powerful this magnet the more powerful will be its magnetic field and the more powerful induced magnet will the nail become or in other words stronger the inducing field stronger will be the induced magnet generated and the second uh, criteria which decides what will be the strength of a induced magnet is the alignment of the ferromagnetic material with the magnetic field lines if the ferromagnetic material is perfectly aligned or it is perfectly in line with the inducing field there will be maximum induction occurring resulting in a strong induced magnet being generated and if the material lies perpendicular to the inducing field there will be negligible induction resulting in a very weak magnet uh, this will become more clear to you as we go into the details of uh, magnetism further in the coming slides but for now just remember that uh, if the material is aligned with the magnetic field maximum induction is going to occur and if the material is not aligned with the magnetic field lines that means it is uh, at right angles to the magnetic field lines there will be negligible amount of induction resulting in a very very weak magnet now once a magnet is generated either by using a permanent magnet or by using a magnetic field making it a induced magnet once it is made it acquires two poles 
the poles are indicated as red pole and the blue pole so you can see in this diagram we have a bar magnet having these two poles the red pole and the blue pole along with these poles it will also generate a magnetic field around it you can see these dotted line extending out of the physical body of the magnet these dotted line represent the magnetic field of this magnet now these lines the dotted lines which represent the magnetic field uh, of the magnet are called as the magnetic lines of force any magnet whether permanent or induced will have these magnetic lines of force around it now the lines of force they always come out or they originate from the red pole of the magnet they come out or originate from the red pole of the magnet and they re enter into the magnet through the blue pole as you can see the right side of this magnet is uh, red pole it has the red polarity and you can see all the magnetic field lines or magnetic lines of force are coming out from here and uh, the left side pole is the blue pole of the magnet and you can see that all the magnetic lines of force are re-entering into the magnet through the blue pole so this is a very important property of the magnet once it acquires two poles the red and the blue pole the magnetic lines of force will always come out of the red pole and the magnetic lines of force will re-enter into the magnet through the blue pole now in previous discussions on magnetism you may have also heard the poles being referred to as north pole and the south pole but uh, that will be uh, not correct the terminology is uh, not correct uh, why it is not correct once i explain to you the magnetism of the earth it will become very clear to you that uh, marking the poles of a magnet as north and south is sometimes confusing so refrain from giving the names as north and south we will just mention the poles of the magnet as red pole and the blue pole and we will remember that magnetic lines of force always come out from the red pole and they re-enter the magnet through the blue pole okay up to here beta chale aage sir in this diagram what is the n and s stand for this is north and south right uh i have just mentioned it here uh, to emphasize that uh, the two types of magnetism that is permanent magnetism and induced magnetism we now go into the properties exhibited or shown by magnets now magnets show two distinct properties these are number 1 a freely suspended magnet aligns itself with a magnetic meridian with the red pole of that magnet towards the north magnetic pole of the earth and the blue pole of the magnet towards the south magnetic pole of the earth this is the first property freely suspended magnet aligns itself in the magnetic meridian or towards magnetic north and south red end points towards magnetic north and the blue end points towards magnetic south the second property which the magnets show is the unlike poles of magnets attract each other and the like poles of a magnet repel each other if you bring close a blue pole to blue pole there will be a repulsion you bring close a red pole to red pole there will be a repulsion a repulsing force but if you bring the opposite poles close to each other blue close to red there will be attraction between them a attractive force appears 
and uh, they are attracted towards each other. So these are the two basic properties exhibited by the magnets. Uh, sir, one question. Go ahead. Now we go into one more very important property of a magnet. Now every magnet is going to have a magnetic field around it. In the area surrounding that magnet, there will be a presence of a magnetic field. Now the strength or power of this magnetic field is not uniform at all the locations around the magnet. The strength or power of this magnetic field keeps on changing depending upon the location. Now let us try to understand how this power of the magnetic field or strength of the magnetic field varies. Now we can see a bar magnet here in the diagram. If we draw a line joining both the poles of the magnet and extend that line, this is known as the axis of this bar magnet. And any position in the direction of the axis of the magnet is known as a end on position. You can see it here also. End on position means along the axis of the magnet. And if you go perpendicular to the axis of the magnet, we go in a direction perpendicular to the axis of the magnet. This is known as broadside on position. Exactly like a ship, if you extend the fore and aft line uh, and if you have any target there in that location, it's called as end on. And if you draw a imaginary line around the beam of the ship in the outward shape direction, that's called a broadside on position. So same way perpendicular to the axis, any position here we is known as a broadside on position. So you can see it here. It is at right angles to the axis of the magnet. Now, how does the strength of the magnetic field vary? The magnetic field strength in the end on position is twice the field strength in the broadside on position. Just to give you an example, if you go one centimeter away from this pole of the magnet and measure the magnetic field strength here, and the same thing is done at broadside on position, you go one centimeter away in the broadside on position and measure the magnetic field strength here, you will see that the field strength at end on position is twice as powerful as compared to the field strength at the broad side on position. So doubts better any Earth's magnetism. Now nature has made the Earth as a magnet. Earth has its own magnetic field. We can experience uh, that magnetic field and uh, this magnetic field is very much similar to the magnetic field of a bar magnet. So let us try to understand uh, the orientation of this uh, magnetic field of the earth. So the magnetic field of the earth is identical to the field of a short bar magnet as if God or nature has put this short bar magnet and fitted it inside the earth. How is this bar magnet fitted inside? This is uh, shown in this particular diagram. You see and uh, the magnetic field of the earth is such as if there is a powerful short power magnet. You see this power magnet? the blue end on the top and the red end at the bottom. So the magnetic field of the earth is exactly like the field of a short bar magnet. So you can see uh, the red end of the magnet, the magnetic field lines come out of it and uh, these arrows made on the magnetic field strength lines they show that all these magnetic field lines are coming out from the red end and they are re-entering into the earth's bar magnet from the blue color end. 
if you extend the axis of this short bar magnet you see this yellow color line extending outside wherever this line extended meets the surface of earth it meets at this particular point which is close to the north pole it is known as the magnetic north pole and if you extend the axis of this bar magnet on the other side you see here it is uh, meeting up on the surface of earth and this is the magnetic south pole so the short bar magnet is fitted inside the earth the magnetic field is exactly similar to as if the short bar magnet is fitted inside the earth and if we extend the axis at the points where they cut the surface of earth these points are known as the magnetic poles if you extend the axis close to the uh, axis towards the top or towards the north uh, side you get the magnetic north pole and when you extend it towards the bottom or towards the uh, south side you get the magnetic south pole now along with these poles you also see a green color line shown in the diagram now this green color line is the axis around which the earth rotates now this line is different from the line which is showing the magnetic north poles the green color line which is the axis around which the earth rotates if you extend this line to the surface of earth the points where it meets the earth surface are known as the geographic poles so you see this is the geographic north pole on top and if you extend it on to the other side this is the geographic south pole at the bottom now you can also see here that the magnetic poles are not exactly at the same location where the geographic poles are they are situated at slightly different locations they are close but they are not exactly at the same location the geographic north and south poles are at a different location and the magnetic north and south poles are at a different location so as far as this short bar magnet is concerned the blue pole of this short bar magnet points close to the earth's north geographic pole and the red end or the red pole of this bar magnet points close to the earth's south geographic pole uh any you can uh, see the earth's magnetic field uh, in a different uh, diagram now again the same thing is represented here you can see the geographic north pole of the earth this is the geographic north pole this line the solid white color line represents the axis around which the earth rotates you can see these arrows indicating the direction of rotation so extended on this side this is the geographic south pole the magnetic field of the earth the magnetic poles they point in different directions the direction in which the magnetic poles point is denoted by the dotted line so you can see this dotted line extending on to both the sides the end or the pole which points close to geographic north pole is called as the north magnetic pole and the end or the pole which is close to the geographic south pole is known as the south magnetic pole okay so this is the same diagram let's proceed ahead so once again emphasizing the geographical poles are the points where the axis of rotation of the earth pass through the earth's surface the solid line as i told you before represents the geographic poles of the earth and the direction in which the magnetic poles point are called the magnetic north and the magnetic south you see the uh, short bar magnet of the earth wherever the poles of this uh, magnetic uh, the bar magnet uh, point 
these are known as the magnetic poles so as we have seen in this diagram the magnetic poles are slightly away from the geographic poles now we have seen two different types of poles the geographic poles where the axis of rotation of the earth cut the earth surface and the magnetic poles which depend upon the magnetic field of the earth now out of these two poles the magnetic poles of the earth are not stationary the geographic poles are stationary they are at a fixed location but the magnetic poles of the earth are not stationary and keep on changing their position or location slowly now you can see this particular diagram uh, the apex of the cone here this particular point represents the north geographic pole and this particular diagram a particular sector of the earth shows us the movement of the north magnetic pole over the years you can see how the magnetic pole has been changing its location from 1600 to 1700 1800 1900 and 2000 and so on so clear beta any doubts up to here uh, another diagram which you see on the screen now showing you the earth's magnetism you can see this is the place where the north magnetic pole is where this red arrow is pointing into the surface of earth the point where this red arrow is coming out is the south magnetic pole of the earth and uh, you can see the geographic poles also the dotted line represents the axis and this is the geographic south pole and this dotted line going on top this point here represents the north geographic pole now another uh, important thing to understand here is the north and south geographic poles are di uh, diametrically opposite points very much symmetrical diametrically opposite point and exactly midway between both the geographic poles we have the equator you see this straight line represents the equator every point on equator is 90 degrees away from both the poles now in a similar fashion we have the north magnetic pole as well as the south magnetic pole now north and south magnetic pole may not be diag diametrically opposite they do not follow symmetry they may not be diametrically opposite point number 1 and number 2 the magnetic equator is also not a perfect great circle you see this uh, curved line which is shown in the diagram is the magnetic equator and this magnetic equator as you can see is not symmetrical it is not a perfect great circle it's a curved line moving over the surface of earth and it does not follow symmetry every point on the magnetic equator is not 90 degree away from the poles so magnetism is something which is dynamic and does not follow geometry so let us now go through some uh, basic uh, definitions related to the earth's uh, magnetism first we come to the magnetic poles what are these magnetic poles magnetic poles are defined as those points where the earth's magnetic field lines are vertical vertical means perpendicular to the earth surface you see right now where the laser pointer is this is the north magnetic pole and you can see that the magnetic field line is vertical here going down vertically into the earth surface similarly if you come to the south magnetic pole the laser pointer is right now at the south magnetic pole and you see the magnetic field line is coming vertically out from this particular point so magnetic poles are the points where the earth's magnetic field lines are vertical 
they are making a right angle to the surface of earth at south magnetic pole they are coming vertically out and at the north magnetic pole they are going vertically in why are they coming out of the south magnetic pole because we know the earth's south magnetic pole has a red polarity and we know magnetic field lines always come out of the red pole of a magnet why the lines at north magnetic pole going into the earth surface this is because the earth's north magnetic pole has a blue polarity and we are aware that magnetic lines of force re-enter into the magnet at the blue end let's now move on to the magnetic uh, equator as you can see in this diagram uh, this random line marked by the highlighter the laser pointer right now is the magnetic equator now what is this magnetic equator it is an imaginary line joining those points where the earth's magnetic field lines are horizontal or parallel to the earth's surface now if you have a, a closer look at the diagram i told you the poles are the points where the magnetic field lines are perpendicular to the earth's surface or they are vertical as you go closer to the magnetic equator and as you go far away from the magnetic poles you see the angle at which they cut the earth surface keeps on reducing keeps on getting lesser and lesser at the pole they cut the earth surface at 90 degree angle now as you proceed away from the pole you can see from the diagram as i am showing with the laser pointer with the uh, the observer going away from the pole you can see that the angle at which they cut the earth surface keeps on becoming lesser and lesser so it was 90 at the south pole you go away from the pole the angle keeps on becoming lesser maybe 85 here 80 70 60 40 and so on now when you reach at the magnetic equator if you look at the diagram carefully you will see that the magnetic field lines are parallel to the earth surface being parallel to the earth surface means they are perfectly horizontal neither coming upwards nor going downwards they are perfectly horizontal parallel to the earth surface similarly on the other side if you see on the other side the full magnetic field lines are not shown they have only shown a small portion close to the earth surface indicated by an arrow you can see the angle which the magnetic field line was making at the south pole was 90 degree you go away from the pole angle reduces 80 70 60 40 30 20 10 and eventually at this point when you come at the magnetic equator you see the magnetic field line is perfectly horizontal or is running parallel to the earth surface again from the magnetic equator if you proceed towards the north pole magnetic north pole you will see the angle will start to increase again slowly it becomes 10 20 30 40 50 60 and eventually when you reach at the pole it becomes 90 degree again so any doubt going further uh, let me show you the instrument with which we observe or find out or measure this dip angle on the surface of earth at different locations the instrument which you see here in the diagram on the right side of the screen this instrument is called as a dip needle so dip at any place can be observed uh, using this uh, instrument now right now you can see this instrument is having a magnetic needle having its uh, red end and the blue end and you can see there is a scale given which measures the dip angle and uh, right now you can see 
the dip angle is about uh, 64 degrees 10 20 30 40 50 it's about 64 degrees dip at this particular place so, now uh, so dip is the angle this instrument so, is showing uh, you how this dip is uh, taken uh, practically uh, let me see i think i have a video i'll show you Now moving further, the magnetic field of the earth at any particular place is broken down into two components. As you can uh, see in this particular diagram, this slanting line represents the earth's magnetic field, which is shown as total field intensity, the total force of the earth's magnetic field. And uh, this angle which you see here, the angle which the magnetic field line makes with the horizontal is known as the dip angle. And uh, this total magnetic field intensity is broken down into two components, the horizontal component and the vertical component. The horizontal component of the total force or the Earth's magnetic field is known as H or HF, horizontal force. Now this H or HF is what makes the compass point towards the magnetic pole or this H or HF is responsible as a directive force which gives the directive force to our compass. Horizontal force or H giving directive property to our magnetic compass is maximum at the equator as at the equator, the magnetic field lines are perfectly horizontal. And this keeps on reducing as the latitude increases, becoming nil at the magnetic poles, because at the magnetic pole, the magnetic field lines are perfectly vertical. They don't have any horizontal component at all. Therefore, the directive property of a magnetic compass is highest at the equator and nil at the poles. This is exactly the reason why the magnetic compass starts to lose its directive force as the vessel goes in higher latitude. Up above about 70 degrees north or south latitudes, the magnetic compass becomes uh, unreliable and uh, loses a substantial amount of its directive force. So is that clear? Now let's move into the ship's magnetism. We have already discussed about the Earth's magnetism. Earth's magnetism <coughs> is what affects our magnetic compass and provides the directive force to the compass. Now ship's magnetism is another force which is very much present at the compass location and it affects our compass. So we are going to analyze what type of magnetism is present in the ship and how does that magnet magnetism of the ship affects the compass in a positive way or in a negative way. And eventually in the end, we are going to see how do we counteract or compensate the effects of the ship's magnetism on our magnetic compass. So let's go into these uh, concepts one by one. Now in the olden days, the ships were made of wood. Wood was a, a non-magnetic material and would not have any magnetism of its own. On such a ship, the only force which affects the magnetic compass is the Earth's magnetism and the compass would point in the direction of the magnetic poles. Once we identify the magnetic But nowadays, ships are being built of steel, which is a ferromagnetic material. Steel or mild steel or iron is a ferromagnetic material and it has the capability to acquire magnetism. We have seen in the previous slides that uh, uh, two types of magnetism can be generated in uh, ferromagnetic substances. One is permanent magnetism, which was generated by 
bringing it in contact with a permanent magnet in a specific way and the second was was induced magnetism which is generated when any ferromagnetic material comes under the effect of a magnetic field so this mild steel being a ferromagnetic material can acquire magnetism of its own and as we have already discussed the acquired magnetism by the ship by the steel of which the ship is made could be either induced magnetism <coughs> or it could be permanent magnetism so these are the two types of magnetism which could be present in the ship structure now based on what type of magnetism is acquired by a particular structure or part of the ship it is divided into two types all the structures are divided into two categories the first category is known as soft iron structures and the second category is known as hard iron structures let us see them one by one induced magnetism of the ship is acquired by those parts of the ship or steel structures which instantly and easily get magnetized when placed in a magnetic field also they immediately lose their magnetism as soon as the magnetic field is removed these type of materials or structures are termed as soft iron structures now moving on to the hard iron structures permanent magnetism of the ship is acquired by those parts of the ship or steel structures which offer substantial resistance to magnetic changes these materials do not get magnetized easily but once magnetized they retain their magnetism permanently now these kind of structures or these type of materials are termed as hard iron structures so basically the ship is divided into these two kinds of structure the soft iron and hard iron structures soft iron structures gain or acquire magnetism very easily and that acquired magnetism is induced magnetism it is temporary in nature as soon as the inducing field or the magnetic field which was responsible for the magnetism is removed the structures lose their magnetism instantly whereas on the other hand the hard iron structures they do not acquire magnetism easily just the presence of magnetic field is not sufficient to acquire magnetism in those uh, structures but if they get magnetized then the magnetism remains there permanently they do not lose their magnetism hmm, easily now one more thing to understand before we proceed ahead it should be very much clear in your mind that these hard and soft words which we have used in the definitions hard iron structures and soft iron structures they are basically denoting the two different types of structures or material having different magnetic properties they relate to their magnetic properties or magnetic behavior and these materials are not literally hard or soft to touch iron so they are equally hard or soft to touch it is not that a soft iron structure is pretty soft to touch no it is not that way do not take the meaning of the words literally they are just denoting their magnetic properties or magnetic behavior so further into the hard iron and uh, soft iron although no structure on the ship can be categorized as entirely or 100% a hard iron structure or a soft iron structures because any structure on board a ship will possess both the properties in varying degrees some part of it will acquire magnetism very easily and lose it equally easily 
and some part of the structure will acquire magnetism hmm, very uh, uh, slowly and once acquired it will not leave so if every structure has both these properties in it how do we classify them as hard iron and soft iron now these are generally classified on the basis of which out of the two magnetic behavior is predominant in that structure let us say we have a particular structure let us say we have a, a, a mast now in that mast we analyze and find out that 70% of it have it has soft iron magnetic properties and 30% acquires or has the hard iron uh, magnetic properties so since predominantly most part of it is a, a, a soft iron magnetic behavior part we will term the mast as a soft iron structure the ship structures which are generally prefabricated means they are made in the factory or made in the yard and uh, fitted on board uh, in situation uh, these structures could be the transverse beams the fore and aft longitudinals the vertical stiffeners the mast the funnel all these kind of structures if you see a ship being built in the yard you will see that all these structures the beams the longitudinal vertical stiffener mast and funnels they are basically prefabricated in the yard they are picked up by a crane brought to the place where the ship is being constructed then they are held in place and they are welded there so these kind of material which are prefabricated predominantly exhibit soft iron magnetic behavior on the other hand the ship structures which are extensively worked upon uh, by worked upon we mean when the ship is being built uh, there is a lot of welding or heating or hammering bending grinding cutting these kind the of processes uh, are being uh, made or carried out on those structures these structures could be the ship's hull they could be the bulkheads they could be the decks now these kind of structures predominantly exhibit hard iron magnetic behavior ah uh, go ahead Okay, let's proceed ahead. Now we are going uh, uh, further into the soft iron and uh, hard iron structures because this is a very important concept to understand the working as well as the correction of the magnetic compass. The soft iron structures which are present on board they can be classified into two different uh, categories. these are the vertical soft iron which has a vertical orientation it could be the vertical stiffeners the vertical stiffeners are welded on to the bulkheads so they have a vertical orientation or you could have the masts forward mast any cranes the crane houses the aft mast and you have the funnel all these structures have a vertical orientation on board the second type of uh, uh, soft iron structures could be horizontal soft iron structures now horizontal soft iron structures could be the fore and aft longitudinals it could be the outward ship beams both the longitudinals as well as the beams are uh, welded on top of the decks or top of the keel plate or at the bottom of the uh, uh, you can say the top deck of the the tanks so they have a horizontal orientation so these are the two different categories into which the soft iron is divided in short the vertical soft iron is also known as vsi and the horizontal soft iron is known as hsi now if you consider a horizontal soft iron 
एनी डाउट अप टू हेयर बेटा सर ये सब याद रख ओके As I told you, a horizontal soft iron could be a fore and aft longitudinal or a outward shaped beam. The horizontal soft iron structures on board are magnetized by the horizontal component of the earth's magnetic field, known as H or HF. Now, when we discussed the magnetic field of the earth, in that we discussed that at any particular place on the earth's surface, the total magnetic field intensity. represented by this slanting vector can be divided into two components the horizontal component known as h or hf the and the vertical component known as z now why have we divided them into components so that we can understand the effect of earth's magnetism easily onto the ship structure and onto the compass now obviously if you have a horizontal soft iron structure on board it will be magnetized by the horizontal component of the earth's magnetic field that is h or hf now how is it affected now a blue pole is acquired where the lines of force enter the material and the red pole is acquired where they leave the material now we have seen this that uh, uh, every magnet has its two poles the blue and the red pole and we have seen red pole is the one from where the lines of force come out and blue pole is the one where the lines of force enter into the magnet so same thing applies here let's assume we have a ship uh, which is on a northerly course 000 course the ship is at the equator now if you visualize a ship on equator on a heading of 000 you will see that uh, the magnetic lines of force at the equator they are also parallel to the earth surface they are also horizontal and they will be entering from the stern of the ship and they will be leaving from the bow of the ship now if we have a fore and aft longitudinal the magnetic lines of force will be entering into that end of longitudinal which is toward the stern and since the lines are entering there it will have a blue pole at that particular location going to the forward end of the uh, fore and aft longitudinal the lines of force will be coming out from the forward end so the forward end of the longitudinal will acquire a red polarity so this is the meaning of the second sentence a blue pole is acquired where the lines of force enter the material and a red pole is acquired where they leave the material now the strength of induced magnetism generated in a longitudinal a longitudinal is a horizontal soft iron structure so when it is exposed to the magnetic field of the earth it acquires magnetism but the strength of the induced magnetism depends on the heading of the ship uh, let's understand this by taking this example know that the h component the horizontal component of the earth's magnetic field always acts northwards so therefore the horizontal soft iron structures will receive maximum induction if they lie in the north south direction and they will receive zero induction if they lie in the east west direction uh, you remember when we discussed about the induced magnetism i told you that the strength of the induced magnetism depends upon the orientation of the soft iron if the the soft iron structure is oriented or aligned in the direction of the magnetic field maximum induction would occur and if it is misaligned that means it has a orientation perpendicular to the direction in which the field lines are going it will have minimum or negligible induction so taking this example uh we had a vessel heading in the northerly direction so a vessel which is heading north 
the fore and aft longitudinals which will also be heading in the lying in the north south direction will receive maximum induction from the magnetic field of the earth the earth's magnetic field also is in the north south orientation so they are perfectly aligned with the magnetic field of the earth generating maximum induction so with maximum induction it will have strong magnetism acquired and uh, if you now concentrate on the outward ship beams our vessel is heading in another lee direction so the fore and aft longitudinals were perfectly aligned with the magnetic field but the outward ship beams on that ship will be oriented in a east west orientation now the magnetic field of the earth is going in a north south direction the outward ship beam oriented in a east west direction so they are at right angles to each other so totally misaligned with the magnetic field of the earth so this tells us that there will be zero or negligible induction on the outward ship beams with the ship lying in the northerly heading so a ship is on the northerly heading the fore and aft longitudinals will have maximum induction and the outward ship beams will have negligible or zero induction so beta were you able to understand this one up to here uh, so from this we are able to understand that the magnetism generated in the a horizontal soft iron depends on the heading of the ship we have seen this ship heading in the northerly direction there was maximum induction in the fore and aft longitudinal and there was zero induction in the outward ship beams you can imagine it in this way now uh, let us assume that this particular ship which was heading in northerly direction now changes its heading and uh, alters its course and now it is heading in the east west direction if the ship is heading in the east west direction you can now see that the fore and aft longitudinal is also lying in the east west orientation and it has become perpendicular to the magnetic field of the earth which is lying or running in the north south direction so when the ship alters course to 090 and is moving on a easterly track the fore and aft longitudinals are going to lose their induction there will be no magnetism or negligible magnetic field acquired or generated or induced magnetism generated on the fore and aft longitudinal now on the other hand the outward ship beam in this condition with the ship heading east the outward ship beam are now lying in the north south orientation the earth's magnetic field is also in the north south orientation so they are perfectly aligned with each other generating maximum possible induction on the outward ship beams thus the magnetism generated in hsi depends on the heading of the ship because as the heading of the ship changes the orientation of the hsi with respect to the magnetic field of the art also keeps on changing the induced magnetism generated in a vertical soft iron or a horizontal soft iron will also change with the position of the ship now you see the basic cause of this magnetism the induced magnetism in soft iron structure is the magnetic field of the earth now if the ship changes its location let's assume that the vessel was on the equator and now it has moved towards the pole now as soon as the vessel changes its location the earth's magnetic field which is the generating force for inducing the uh, magnetism also changes so as the vessel changes its position the magnetic field which is affecting the vessel also changes the magnetic field at the equator is in a different orientation field lines are horizontal horizontal component is the strongest the zero component the vertical component is the zero component now as you move towards the pole horizontal component keeps on becoming lesser and lesser and vertical component keeps on becoming stronger 
if you go at the pole you have zero horizontal component and maximum vertical component so with the magnetism of the earth changing with position as the ship goes from position a to position b the induced magnetism in the ship's soft iron structure is also going to change now the induced magnetism in the ship structure will also change continuously when the vessel is rolling or pitching now when the vessel is rolling or pitching the fore and aft longitudinal or the outward ship beam or the vertical structures they are also changing their orientation time and again with every roll and with every pitch of the the ship the hsi and the vsi are going to change their orientation and as their orientation changes the induced magnetism in those structures also changes. now we are up. let's now move into the vertical soft iron on the the vsi just as the hsi horizontal soft iron on board was induced by the h or hf component of the earth's magnetic field exactly in the same way the vertical soft iron or vsi on board is magnetized by the vertical component of the earth's magnetic field the vertical component is represented by z wherever the magnetic lines of force enter into the structure it will acquire a blue pole and wherever the lines of force leave a structure it will acquire a red pole at that particular location uh, to give you an example uh, let's assume uh, we have our ship now at the north pole if the ship is at the north pole the earth's vertical component z component is the strongest there the magnetic field lines at the north pole are going vertically downwards so if a ship is standing on the north pole you will see that the magnetic lines of force will be going vertically downwards into the earth surface let's uh, assume or visualize the mast on that particular ship let's assume the forward mast mm -hmm. now with the vertical lines the, the the lines of force going vertically downwards they will be entering from the top of the mast now this point where the lines of force enter that is at the top of the mast it acquires a blue polarity wherever the field lines enter into a structure or a magnet a blue pole is acquired and these vertical lines of force going downwards will be coming out from the base of the mast so the bottom most part of the mast or the base of the mast from where the magnetic lines of force are leaving or going out gets red polarity it acquires red polarity because wherever the lines of force leave or come out from a, a structure or a magnet it acquires a red polarity at that location now let's assume that the same ship starts moving now the top of the mast was blue and the bottom of the mast was red this ship has started traveling now and this ship now has crossed the equator and gone into southern hemisphere and it has reached the south pole now the same ship is at the south pole we are aware that at the south pole the magnetic lines of force they come out from the earth surface now when they come out of the earth surface they will be entering the mast from the bottom thus giving it a blue polarity the bottom of the mast now acquires a blue polarity and these lines of force will be leaving from top of the mast giving it a red polarity so yes so now it means we are now will be discussing about hard iron structure
bulkhead deck ha go ahead beta what are you asking so we will be discussing now about hard iron that's right beta exactly right uh, we will be now discussing about the hard iron structures I am in this uh, position till the time the construction of the ship is complete. In a yard or in a dock, when you start the ship building, laying down the keel of the ship, the ship remains in the same orientation till the time it is ready to be launched for sea trials. So the Earth's magnetic field will keep on affecting the ship in this particular orientation only. so you can see the magnetic field lines are entering from the top deck of the ship and they are leaving out from the keel of the ship so the hull of the ship lies in one constant direction and is worked upon when the ship is being constructed we will be welding the plates we will be hammering them bending them heating them a high voltage electric current will be passing at the time of welding so we will be using grinders cutters all these instruments on them so all the ship's plates which are being fitted will be worked upon at the time of ship building now during this entire process which happens over a long period of time it may takes uh, one year or it may take six months for the ship to be built so during this long period the earth's magnetic field continuously acts on the hull in the same direction or the same orientation now since we are working upon all these metal plates which are being fitted on the ship and the earth's magnetic field is acting on it in the same orientation it generates permanent magnetism in these hard iron structures so i told you that hard iron structures are those structures which are extensively worked upon at the time of construction of the ship or ship building like say for example a keel plate a deck plate a bulkhead now when you are fitting this let us assume there is a deck plate you are fitting this deck plate uh, uh, on the deck of the ship during its construction now you will be cutting the plate making it to size you will be bending it as required you will be hammering it then you will be welding from the seams then you will be welding a stiffener or a longitudinal on it or a transverse beam on it so all these things when they are happening and we are working upon this particular deck plate the earth's magnetic field is acting on that deck plate in one particular orientation and this earth's magnetic field acting on it during all this jobs or work being done generates a permanent magnetism in these structures since lot of work working upon is being done they are hard iron structures and the earth's magnetic field generates a permanent magnetism in these hard iron structure now as this is a permanent magnetism once the material acquires it it will not then change with time or with the position of the ship the permanent magnetism once acquired remains there in the structure and it will not change uh, with time or uh, when the ship changes its position now since it is permanent magnetism the poles which are generated as we have seen a blue pole is generated where the lines enter the uh, material and a red pole is generated where they leave the material the poles generated are also permanent the course or the heading of the ship or the rolling pitching motion of the ship will not have any effect on them once these poles are generated the rolling pitching of the ship the course of the ship the heading of the ship the position of the ship 
will not have any effect on these poles because these are permanent poles. Now the ship which I showed you in the previous slide, the lines of force were entering on the deck and they were leaving out from the keel. So if there is a bulkhead, let us say you are welding a bulkhead in place, intertank bulkhead, the topmost part of the bulkhead is going to acquire blue polarity and the bottommost part of the bulkhead is going to acquire red polarity and these poles will remain permanent hmm, always as they are permanent magnetism. The vessel is going to acquire magnetism both in the horizontal and vertical planes. I will explain this to you with the help of diagrams uh, going further. A blue pole is acquired where the lines enter the material and a red pole is acquired where the lines of force leave the material. Now, as I told you that this permanent magnetism is acquired in the horizontal direction and the vertical direction. Now, let's try to understand that by uh, making some diagrams. Let us assume uh, that we have a ship being built at a yard which is on the equator. We have a yard somewhere on the equator and the ship is being built. Two ships are being built there. One of the ships is put in the yard heading in the southerly direction. So right now you see where my laser pointer is. This ship is being built in the yard on a southerly heading. This is how the orientation of the yard is. Now, if it is being built on a southerly heading, you see a red color pole here at the bottom or at the south. This is basically the south pole or the south magnetic pole of the earth. And you see a, a blue pole at the top or north of the ship. This represents the north magnetic pole of the earth, which has the blue polarity. And these dotted lines which you see, the dotted lines going from red pole to the blue pole, they represent the magnetic field lines of the earth. We are aware that magnetic field lines come out of the red pole, which is the south magnetic pole of the earth. They are all coming out from the red pole. And these lines of force, they re-enter or go into the blue pole or the north magnetic pole of the earth. So that is why you see the arrows are always from red to blue. Now this magnetic field is affecting the ship which is being built and all these magnetic field lines, they are entering into the ship structure from the bow side, giving it a blue polarity and they are leaving out from the ship from the stern side, giving it a red polarity. Why the bow is blue in this case? Because wherever the magnetic field lines enter, that is the blue pole. Is the stern red in this place? The stern is red because wherever the lines of force come out, that is the red pole of the magnet. So with the lines of force entering into the bow, it gets a blue polarity. And with the lines of force coming out of the stern, it gets a red polarity. Now, let's assume that there is another ship which is being built in the same yard, but in a different dock. And that dock has a northeasterly orientation. So you now concentrate on the ship on the right side. This ship is heading in a northeasterly direction. The south pole of the earth is at the same location. North pole is at the same location. Magnetic lines of force of the earth are moving in the same orientation from south to north. But with the ship heading in the northeasterly direction, now if you look carefully, the magnetic field lines are entering into the ship structure from the starboard quarter side. So you see starboard quarter is where the lines of force are entering. And that is where a blue pole will be acquired. These lines of force are coming out of the ship structure from the port bow and that is where a red pole will be acquired. 
So you compare both these ships now, you see with the change in heading of the ship, the horizontal positioning or location of the poles has also changed. So is this part clear beta? Any doubts up to here? No sir. Very good beta. So this was the uh, horizontal positioning of the poles. Let me now show you the sir. vertical positioning also. Uh, go ahead beta. Sir, so there will be so many points where there will be blue polarity, not only one, just one point. Sir. Assume a ship which is built in the northern hemisphere. You see these two ships on the top. This one is built on the northern hemisphere at some place on the northern hemisphere. This ship also is built in the northern hemisphere. This ship is being built in the yard somewhere located in the northerly latitudes. Now you see that when the ship is being built, the magnetic lines of force will be coming into the earth surface. So they will be entering from the deck of the ship and they will be coming out or leaving out the ship from the keel. So since they are entering into the deck of the ship, it will acquire a blue polarity. And since they are leaving out or coming out from the keel of the ship, it will acquire a red polarity. This is exactly the same situation uh, for which I showed you the diagram in the previous slides also. We saw a ship uh, standing in a yard and the magnetic field lines were going vertically downwards. So they were entering from the deck, giving it a blue polarity and they are coming out from the keel, giving it a red polarity. So if the ship is built anywhere in the northern hemisphere, it will have a blue polarity deck and a red polarity keel of the ship. Now let's uh, visualize a ship being built somewhere in the southern hemisphere. So this is the ship you see uh, being built in the southern hemisphere. Now in the southern hemisphere, we are aware that the lines of force come out of the earth surface. So you see the lines of force coming out of the earth surface will enter from the keel of the ship giving it a blue polarity and they will come out from the deck of the ship giving it a red polarity. So any ship which is built in the southern hemisphere will have a blue keel and a red deck. Any ship built in the northern hemisphere will have a red keel and a blue deck. So when you come to know the location where the ship is built, and the heading on which the ship is built, you can find out easily what is the vertical and horizontal positioning of the poles. So beta up to here, uh, let me know any doubts coming to your mind. Depending on the heading of the ship and the hemisphere in which the ship is built, the positioning of the permanent pole could result in any oblique direction. The permanent magnetism vector could be present in a three-dimensional orientation. You can understand it from this particular diagram. We have this particular ship here and the permanent magnetism is represented by this oblique slanting vector. This vector represents the permanent magnetism of the ship. One of the poles is on the deck towards the port quarter and other pole is at the keel towards the starboard bow. So this vector represents the permanent magnetism of the ship. Now to counter this permanent magnetism, to rectify it, to correct it, this permanent magnetism in any oblique direction is split up into we split this oblique vector in three mutually perpendicular directions. One of the uh, component is split in the fore and aft direction. This is known as the fore and aft component of the ship's permanent magnetism and it is represented by alphabet P, Papa. 
then you see this second vector this vector this is the second component this is the authward shift component of the ship's permanent magnetism and it is represented by q cubic and the third component is the vertical component you can see this particular arrow shows the vertical component of the ship's magnetism this is known as the vertical component also called as the healing component represented by alphabet r romeo now why are we breaking it up into three vectors like these this is because it is very difficult to counter the permanent magnetism in a oblique direction in a any 3d orientation but when you split it up in three uh, mutually perpendicular directions that is fore and aft outward shape and vertical it becomes easy for us to counter all these three components one by one when we do the compass correction we will see how this fore and aft component is corrected then we will see how this outward shape component is corrected and we will also see how the vertical component is corrected so i am not understanding where is this outward shape q okay okay i got it got it uh yeah it's a 3d kind of diagram beta it is basically coming out of the screen towards you yes understood sir uh, yeah okay excuse me sir go ahead beta sir uh, what is mean by this uh... to the uh, concept of compass work correcting a compass is also known as compass work so what is the concept behind it permanent magnetism and induced magnetism both cause deviation of the magnetic compass now as i told you if our magnetic compass is affected solely by the magnetic earth it will give us precisely the deviation variation can be easily picked up from the chart and applied and once applied it gives you true directions but if you have the magnetism of the ship permanent or in due boost will disturb the distance in the chart the permanent magnetism can be easily understood by considering its three components or by breaking it up into three components that is the p component which is in the fore and aft direction this one then the q component which is in the outward shift direction and the vertical so send these three components of the permanent magnetism we can cancel it or counteract it one by one the induced magnetism can also be generated in, in three different directions it can be broken up into three different directions you have the induced magnetism generated in the fore and aft direction uh, in fore and aft horizontal soft iron that could be a fore and aft longitudinal this is one orientation in which induced magnetism can be generated induced magnetism can also be generated in the outward shift direction in outward shift soft iron which could be the transverse of the outward beams and it can be generated in the vertical direction which happens in vertical soft iron our masts cranes or funnels or vertical stiffeners now each of these components has to be treated separately you see permanent magnetism three component four and aft component or third shift com component vertical component in four and aft horizontal four and aft structures induced magnetism in horizontal outward shift structures and induced magnetism in vertical structures they all have to be treated separately there are six total components of the ship's magnetism with the effect of our 
they need to be treated separately as the deviations which they generate वाई फाई बंद कर दियो के यार which should be able to judge this and provide a correction in the fore and aft direction of the same amount now when the ship goes to a easterly course the fore and aft longitudinal loses its entire magnetism induced magnetism is lost so our corrector should be such that it senses that the fore and aft longitudinal has now become hmm, powerless and the correction which it was providing is also brought to zero so we need a connect correction mechanism for each of these components treating them separately and it should be such a mechanism which keeps on changing its correction depending upon the change in the permanent or induced magnetism of the ship this is what we call as component uh, the the compass work now for treating these components the deviation of the compass is divided into five different parts which we know as coefficients so as i told you we need to uh, tackle these components separately one by one so therefore how do we tackle them differently by dividing the deviation of the ship into five different parts these parts are known as coefficients now what are these coefficients these coefficients are named as a b c d and e the first five alphabets a b c d and e this is how the coefficients are named now it must be clearly understood that these coefficients a b c d e are the deviations generated mm -hmm. and not the forces causing the deviations the forces which are causing the deviations are permanent magnetism of the ship broken down into three components fore and aft p outward ship q vertical r and the induced magnetism of the ship in hsi horizontal soft iron fore and aft in outward ship hsi and in vertical soft iron these are the forces which are generating the deviations what we have now done is let us say to give you an example the ship is on a particular heading and the deviation is 10 degrees east now this 10 degree east comprises of all these five coefficients in it the coefficient a could be contributing 2 degrees coefficient b could be contributing 5 degrees coefficient c could be contributing 0 degrees and so on when the ship changes its heading the contribution of all the coefficients may also change okay now how are these coefficients made this is very very important to understand how are these coefficients specified or made these coefficients are broken up as per the forces causing them so depending upon what force is causing it we have divided it into categories so this is something uh, which is uh, new for you you have not studied this in the second mates level so once you understand this concept of coefficients then the entire compass correction will be very easy to handle let us say for example as i told you a ship is having 10 degree east deviation at a particular heading now out of which let us say 2 uh, degrees of deviation is being caused by the magnetism of the ship in the fore and aft direction the magnetism of the ship in the fore and aft direction it may have a permanent component which is p component p component is the component of the permanent magnetic field of the ship in the fore and aft orientation and 
it may also have some induced magnetism induced magnetism let us say ship is heading in an otherly southerly direction and there is a induced magnetism in the fore and aft longitudinal and it may generate this particular deviation so this deviation being generated by the magnetic field in the fore and aft orientation can be categorized as coefficient a i've just given you an example how the deviation is broken up into five parts so basis its causing factors the deviations are broken up into different parts if we know all the coefficients the total deviation can be calculated on any particular heading of the ship if we know the coefficients of a particular compass let's say you go on a ship and i tell you that these are the five coefficients coefficient a is this much coefficient b is this much coefficient c is this much and so on once i tell you all the coefficients it is very easy for us to calculate the total deviation generated now how can it be done we have a very simple formula for finding the deviation from the coefficients the formula is deviation is equal to coefficient a plus b sin cos plus c cos our uh, first uh, coefficient that is uh, coefficient a coefficient a is a deviation which remains constant in name as well as magnitude on all the headings and is further divided into two parts these two parts are number 1 real a and number 2 apparent a now if you remember the formula which i had shown you the formula for deviation in that formula we saw that this coefficient a is not connected with the ship's course in any way indirectly that means that whatever be the course of the ship or whatever be the heading of the ship the value of coefficient a is not going to change and you see exactly that is what the definition also tells us coefficient a is a deviation which remains constant in name as well as magnitude on all the headings the vessel can continue to change its heading and uh, the deviation which is generated because of coefficient a does not change at all it has two components and it can be divided into these two components one is called as real a another is called as apparent a what is this real a part of the coefficient a it is a constant deviation on all the headings caused by induced magnetism in unsymmetrical pairs of horizontal soft iron i will uh, explain this to you in detail by uh, showing this kind of structure in the diagram so for now just understand it is caused by induced magnetism in unsymmetrical pairs of hsi horizontal soft iron so the cause of real a is the horizontal soft iron on board the second part which is called as apparent a apparent a is a constant deviation on all the headings which is caused by factors other than the magnetic field so up to here clear beta any doubts bolo beta let me now show you the kind of structures which may generate coefficient a on a particular ship now we have seen that coefficient a is generated because of unsymmetrical pairs of horizontal soft iron now horizontal soft iron hsi can be present in two orientation we can have a fore and aft horizontal soft iron something like this one this is horizontal 
soft iron in the fore and aft direction and we can also have horizontal soft iron in the outward ship orientation you now see another uh, horizontal soft iron which has a outward ship orientation so the first thing to note is that coefficient a require a pair pair means there should be a combination of fore and aft as well as outward ship horizontal soft iron the second thing which uh, is required is that these horizontal soft iron should be unsymmetrical now what do we mean by unsymmetrical if you look closely the fore and aft hsi which we have is present only forward of the compass location the circle which you see in the uh, middle of the ship is representing the compass the binnacle and the hsi in the fore and aft orientation is only present forward of the compass and it is not there aft of the compass this kind of a hsi is known as unsymmetrical hsi likewise this outward ship hsi which you see is present only on the port side of the compass and it is not present on the starboard side of the compass so both these hsi are unsymmetrical that means they are present only on one side of the compass and there is a pair present means both fore and aft and outward ship hsi are present this kind of a combination if it is present on a ship will generate coefficient a now usually we do not see any kind of these structures on a normal merchant vessel you will always have symmetrical hsi so that is exactly the reason why coefficient a is absent on most of the normal merchant vessels such a configuration of horizontal soft iron on board a ship so these kind of structures are present how do they result into a real a coefficient or in other words how do they generate a deviation which is constant irrespective of the heading of the ship whichever heading the ship goes the deviation generated by these uh, structures remains constant and does not change so let us try to understand it now this is understood by making a deviation diagram for every coefficient we will be making a deviation diagram like the one you see on the screen now we have the ship uh, on different headings north northeast easterly southeast south southwest westerly and northwesterly so cardinal and intercardinal heading the ship is shown on these eight headings and in each of these headings we are going to analyze that how do these horizontal soft iron structures it is a unsymmetrical pair of horizontal soft iron structures they generate the deviation which does not change so we will first try to understand how do these structures affect our ship and second we will try to see that how does this effect remain same irrespective of the heading of the ship so let's try to concentrate our attention uh, with the ship on the northerly heading the ship is on a north heading you can follow the laser pointer this is the diagram which we are going to uh, see or understand in detail now the ship is on a northerly heading we have these two soft iron structures one a outward ship beam which is only present on the port side of the compass and we have a fore and aft longitudinal which is present on the starboard side only forward of the compass it is not present aft of the compass so we have combination number 1 which we saw in the previous slide a unsymmetrical pair of horizontal soft iron structures you see this big uh, blue color uh, rectangle on top this represents the north magnetic pole of the earth we are aware that the north magnetic pole of the earth has blue polarity and you see this uh, red color uh, rectangle at the bottom this represents the south magnetic pole of the earth 
and we are aware the south magnetic pole has a red polarity now we know that the magnetic lines of force they come out of the red pole and they go into the north pole so the magnetic lines of force coming out of the red pole going into the blue pole so in this particular diagram you will see that the magnetic lines of force are going vertically upwards from the red pole to the blue pole of the earth going vertically upwards like this now with the magnetic field of the earth going vertically upwards it will affect both these structures it will affect the fore and aft longitudinal also and it is going to affect the outward shape beam also now first thing to understand is that these are soft iron structures so they do not have any permanent magnetism there is no permanent magnetism in these structures but being soft iron structures they can get induced by the magnetism or magnetic field of the earth now the magnetic field lines are going vertically upwards if you concentrate your attention to the outward shape beam this outward shape beam is not oriented or aligned in the direction of the magnetic field it is at right angles to the magnetic field of the earth just magnetism i told you that there is minimum induction or zero induction negligible induction when the soft iron structure is misaligned with the inducing field the inducing field in this direction is in the north south orientation and this outward shape beam is in the east west orientation the vessel is heading north so the beam is in east west orientation so this beam is at right angles to the inducing field or the magnetic field of the earth now being at right angles no induction happens no magnetic field induction happens here and the outward shape beam does not acquire any magnetism there are no poles which are generated let's now concentrate our attention to the fore and aft longitudinal the fore and aft longitudinal if you look carefully is aligned exactly in the same direction in which the earth's magnetic field lies the magnetic field lines are in the north south orientation the fore and aft longitudinal is also exactly in the north south orientation so the fore and aft longitudinal is perfectly aligned with the magnetic field and this tells us that there will be maximum induction in the fore and aft longitude maximum induction so we know the fore and aft longitudinal having maximum induction will become a strong magnet now let us now understand the direction of the poles which are generated we see the magnetic field lines are coming out from the red pole of the earth and going into the blue pole so this tells us that these magnetic field lines will be entering into the aft end of the longitudinal if they are entering into the aft end of the longitudinal wherever the lines of force enter that end gets a blue polarity wherever the magnetic lines of force are entering that end of the magnet has a blue polarity so that's why you see the aft end of the fore and aft longitudinal has a blue magnetic pole and these lines of force going from south to north will be coming out from the forward end of the longitudinal the forward end since they are coming out of the forward end of the longitudinal you will see that the forward end of the longitudinal acquires red polarity so this is the reason why you see in the diagram the aft end of the longitudinal has blue polarity and the forward end of the longitudinal has red polarity so we now understand the different poles generated on the fore and aft longitude should the induction or induced magnetism of the horizontal soft iron structures by the earth's magnetism 
let's now try to see uh, that at different headings what is the deviation which is generated because of this induced magnetism so as you can see in the diagram uh, at every heading they indicate to us that it is a easterly deviation you see north heading northeast easterly southeasterly southerly on all the headings they are denoting that the vessel has a easterly deviation and in the definition of uh, coefficient a we have seen that it generates a constant deviation irrespective of the heading so we will try to see now how does this deviation remain constant over all the headings let's first of all try to understand how this easterly deviation is generated with the ship on northerly heading so what i am going to do is i am going to zoom in into this diagram with the ship heading north we are aware that we have a fore and aft longitudinal and a outward ship beam there is no induction on the beam right now because it is at right angles to the earth's field and there is maximum induction in the fore and aft longitudinal so let's now try to zoom in into this so here on the left side you see a zoomed in uh, uh, diagram with the ship heading north let's first make the magnetic compass uh, on this ship now we know the magnetic compass is basically a magnet and uh, the end which points towards the north is the red end of that magnet so let's show our magnetic compass you can see it here the north end of the magnetic compass is having a red polarity you see the red color and the south end is having a blue polarity so this uh, arrow which you see in the zoomed in diagram of the ship now represents the magnetic compass and uh, we have a longitudinal which is to the starboard side of the compass and it is forward of the compass location it is not present aft of the compass location so you can see this longitudinal in the zoomed in diagram now and uh, it is to the starboard side of the compass and is extending to forward of the compass now we have already seen that this particular end the aft end of the longitudinal acquires a blue pole and the forward end of the longitudinal acquires a red pole this is a soft iron structures and these poles are acquired as induced magnetism which are generated by the magnetic field of the earth now whenever we bring a magnet close to our compass every magnet has two poles a red and a blue pole we cannot have a single pole in a magnet anywhere even if you break up a magnet it the broken ends immediately acquire uh, the polarity you cannot have a single pole at any point now whenever you bring a magnet close to the compass it has both the poles the red as well as the blue now which of the poles is going to affect the compass always in all the conditions that poles affect the compass which is closer to it because as you go far away from the pole the magnetic field or its strength or its power reduces it is inversely proportional to square of the distance It means if you increase the distance by twice the magnetism or magnetic field strength of the pole goes down by 1/4 so whenever you bring a magnet close to the compass that particular pole which is closer with respect to the other has its effect on the compass now in this particular case the longitudinal is having two ends one of the ends is very close to the compass which is having a blue polarity whereas the other end for clarity i have exaggerated a bit and uh, taken it out of the ship's hull so the other end of the longitudinal is close to the bow of the ship which is much 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 farther away uh, as compared to the blue pole so in this case blue pole is the one which is going to have its effect on our magnetic compass now how does this blue pole affect our compass the effect of this blue pole 
on to the red end that is the north end of the compass will be attraction because we are aware that opposite poles of a magnet attract each other so this blue pole of the four and a half longitudinal is going to attract the north end of our magnetic compass or magnetic needle so when it attracts the north end towards it the compass is going to deviate to the right side looking at the diagram it is going to deviate to the right side and that is easterly side with the vessel heading north the right side is easterly direction so a easterly deviation is generated also you can see this blue end is also going to interact with the south end of the compass the south end of the compass also has a blue polarity now we know that the uh, same poles of the magnet repel each other so this blue pole of the longitudinal is going to repel the blue pole or the south end of our magnetic compass again generating easterly deviation the compass needle is going to swing clockwise which is easterly deviation so that is why you see they have mentioned here as easterly deviation try to understand the deviation generated on 090 heading we take the ship on 090 heading and we try to understand what is the deviation generated now you see when the ship is heading uh, 090 the four and half longitudinal is heading in the east west direction and it is now perpendicular to the earth's magnetic field earth's magnetic field is in the north south orientation with the longitudinal in the east west orientation it is at right angles to the earth's field and it is totally misaligned with the inducing field that is why no induction on the four and half longitudinal on the other hand the outward ship beam is now perfectly aligned with the magnetic field of the earth the earth's magnetic field is in the north south orientation the outward ship beam is also in the north south orientation perfectly aligned it generates maximum induction so you see on to the starboard end of the beam a blue pole is generated because this is where the lines of force are entering the lines of force come out from the red pole of the earth and they go into the blue pole of the earth so the starboard end of the outward ship beam acquires a blue polarity and the port end of the outward ship beam acquires a red polarity now to see its effect let us now zoom into this particular diagram of the ship we can zoom in and see the effect in detail you can see the zoomed in diagram on the left side now the vessel is heading in the easterly direction the four and a half longitudinal does not have any magnetism so that's why it is not shown in this diagram there are no poles generated there the outward ship beam is present forward of the compass only on the port side you see it is unsymmetrical so it is not present on the starboard side of the compass it is only present on the port side of the compass being unsymmetrical was a requirement uh, of generating real a, a deviation now we have seen the uh, south end of the outward ship beam acquires a blue polarity this is where the lines of force are entering and the north end of the outward ship beam acquires a red polarity now the north end of the beam is close to the ship side and is far away from the compass whereas the south end of the outward ship beam is very close to the compass location it's very close to the compass location so blue end is what affects our compass the ship is heading in the easterly direction compass always points in the north south direction so compass is pointing in this particular direction only and we have a blue pole to the east of the compass this blue pole attracts the red end or the north end of our compass needle 
and the blue pole repels the blue end of the compass needle or the south end of the compass needle again making the needle swing clockwise generating a easterly deviation so you can see again a easterly deviation is generated so whether the ship is on north heading or the ship is on easterly heading in both the cases easterly deviation is generated with the ship heading in the north easterly direction so with the ship heading in the north easterly direction how does the deviation behave let's zoom into this diagram of the ship so on the left side you see the zoomed in diagram of the ship compass as usual placed in the center line uh, irrespective of what is the direction in which the ship is heading the compass needle is always going to point north and south the north end will be the red end of the compass and the south end will be the blue end of the compass now we have a longitudinal fore and aft longitudinal to the starboard of the compass so you can see on the starboard side we have a fore and aft longitudinal which is only forward of the compass it is not there aft of the compass we also have a outward ship beam the outward ship beam is forward of the compass and only to the port side you can see the outward ship beam is only to the port side of the compass it is not present on the starboard side now i have taken the far ends of the longitudinal and the beam out of the ship's hull just to make the picture a little more clear and easy for understanding now in this case you see the earth's magnetic field coming from south to north is going to induce both these structures because both of these structures are now at a 45 degree angle to the earth's magnetic field they are neither fully aligned nor misaligned they are partially aligned with the magnetic field of the earth so there will be partial induction on both these structures that is the longitudinal as well as the beam partial induction on both of them so the poles generated will have partial power and now you look carefully the blue pole is generated in the longitudinal as well as the beam and this is the pole which is closer to our compass the red poles generated are far away from the compass so blue poles are the one which are going to affect our compass now the blue pole of the outward ship beam is closer to the red end or the north end of the compass and it is going to attract the compass towards it whereas the blue pole in the longitudinal is close to the south end of the compass which is again blue and both being the same polarity they are going to repel each other and you will see even though there are two poles they are both trying to swing the compass in the clockwise direction again so you see the compass has to swing clockwise again generating easterly deviation now one doubt may arise that since there are two blue poles now the deviation generated will be more powerful but that is not the case reason being even though two poles are generated but both of them have partial power why the power is partial why their strength is partial because they are not perfectly aligned with the magnetic field of the earth both the longitudinal and the outward ship beam are partially aligned making these poles partially powerful so when both these poles add up they generate the same easterly deviation which was generated on 000 heading and 090 heading so you can see irrespective of the heading on which the ship is the deviation generated remains the same so i hope it is clear now beta sir for this north west uh, direction it is a action of uh, real a 
how do we correct this coefficient the correction of real a is generally not attempted not done the reason for it is number 1 it is very rare on a normal sea going merchant ship that a coefficient a will exist because these kind of soft iron structures are not present on the ship whatever soft iron structures are present they are symmetrical about the compass location even when it is present in some ship it is likely to be very very small so this is the reason why we do not attempt uh, the correction of real a what is done then since the deviation generated is constant on all the headings it can be applied as an index error so you will see that on a ship where real a is present the real a value will be mentioned separately in the deviation card like let us say for example the deviation card will tell you that the real a correction or index error correction is 1 degree east so whatever deviation you obtain from the curve you add 1 degree east to that deviation and it will give you the resultant deviation so deviation being constant on all the headings is it applied as a index error and the real a is not generally corrected now the second component of coefficient a which is known as apparent a is basically the constant deviation on all headings caused by factors other than the magnetic field so any reason any cause other than the magnetic field which leads to a constant error on all the headings will come under apparent a there can be numerous uh, reasons for generation of apparent a some of the examples uh, some possibilities which could lead to this kind of an error you can have the magnetic needles of the card not parallel to 0 180 degree direction of the card now this is a manufacturing defect you can visualize a card is being printed the magnets are to be fitted exactly in the 000180 direction but if during the construction of the card the magnets are fitted slightly at an angle let us say 002 and 182 direction so there will always be a slight error which the compass will show this has got nothing to do with magnetism so this falls under apparent a that's a manufacturing defect in the card sometimes we see there is a lubber line which is fitted on the repeater if the lubber line is not parallel to the ship's fore and aft line so whenever you read that lubber line to get the heading of the ship there will be a constant error this has got nothing to do with the uh, magnetism and it's a it's also a manufacturing defect so it falls under apparent a other reason could be constant error in observing the bearings when the compass is initially adjusted for example there could be a index error in the azimuth mirror leading to wrong deviation card so when that wrong deviation is applied you will get an error so that's also a non magnetic reason further reasons could be error in computing the magnetic bearing when the compass was adjusted rapid swinging of the vessel when observing the bearing for compass adjustment it is recommended that uh, whenever uh, we are uh, doing the compass adjustment the vessel should not be swung rapidly it should be steadied on a particular heading before noting down the deviation or our angles worked out wrongly leading to error in the calculated bearing we usually obtain the compass error by using the azimuth calculating the azimuth by abc method so if the method has been worked out wrongly it will lead to a wrong deviation being noted down and if we use that wrong deviation it will give us wrong uh, uh, bearings or wrong heading of the ship so there could be many other reasons also any reason other than magnetism which leads to a constant error on all the headings falls under the category of apparent a for the correction purpose the value of coefficient a can be easily obtained as the mean of deviation on at least four equidistant headings what does that mean 
let us take the ship on an otherly heading and note down the deviation. Let's now take the ship on a easterly heading, note down the deviation, then southerly heading and westerly heading. So all the four cardinal headings, we swing the ship, take it to four cardinal headings, and we note down the deviation on these four headings. Now, once you take a mean of these four deviations, it gives you the value of coefficient A for that particular ship. Practically, this is done using eight deviations on cardinal and intercardinal headings. Uh, taking this value in uh, eight deviations gives you uh, more accuracy. So practically, we use the deviations on cardinal and intercardinal headings and take a mean. Now you can easily test out this method or try out this method using this formula. This is the same formula which I showed you. Deviation is equal to coefficient A plus B sine cores plus C cos cores plus D sine 2 cores plus E cos 2 cores. So in this formula, if you put the course as 0, 0, 0 and uh, get the result, then second time you put the value as 90, third time you put the value as 180, fourth time you put the value of course as 270. Now, once you get the answers and you take a mean, you will see that all the other coefficients B, C, D and E will get cancelled out. The only coefficient which will remain is coefficient A. Now let's move on to the second coefficient that is coefficient B. The definition says coefficient B is the maximum value of the semicircular deviation which varies as the sine of the compass course. Now in the formula which I gave you, in that particular formula, what is that part which is proportional to or which varies as sine of the compass course? It is the second part of the formula that is B sine course. Now the maximum value of that deviation is what is coefficient B. So you see this definition has been picked up or you can easily remember this definition. This is the formula. Coefficient B is the maximum value of the semicircular deviation which varies as sine of the compass course. That part of the deviation which varies as sine of the compass course, the maximum possible value what it can have is what is coefficient B. Now, what is the meaning of semicircular deviation? Now, we know one circle is 360 degrees. So, if a deviation carries the same name over the entire 360 degrees, if it is east and it remains east for the vessel heading on entire 360 degrees, it is called a circular deviation. A deviation which is of one single name for a semicircle that is 180 degrees and in the other semicircle, the remaining 180 degrees, it gets a opposite name. It is called as a semicircular deviation. To give you an example, let us say on a particular ship, you observe the deviation from heading north to south. It is easterly deviation. And when the ship heads from south to southwest, that is 1801902702 up to 360 in the southwest and northwest quadrant, the deviation is westerly. So you see now for 180 degrees, the deviation was east. For the next 180, it has changed to westerly direction. Such a deviation is called as a semicircular deviation. Deviation changes after every 90 degrees. For the first quadrant, the northeast quadrant, the deviation was easterly. For southeasterly quadrant, the deviation becomes westerly. 
for south westerly quadrant it is again easterly and for north westerly quadrant it becomes westerly means it changes after every 90 degrees it is known as a quadrantal deviation so semi circular deviation means that for 180 degrees out of the total 360 it will have one particular name either east or west and for the remaining 180 degrees the name is going to be is there is the horizontal fore and aft component of the ship's magnetic field go ahead beta horizontal fore and aft component of the ship's magnetic field is caused or generated by permanent magnetism of the ship as well as induced magnetism of the ship so the contributing factor for coefficient b are both permanent magnetism as well as induced magnetism the part of coefficient b generated by permanent magnetism is called permanent b or in short pb papa bravo and that part of the coefficient b which is generated by induced magnetism is called induced b or in short form ib let's now see the cause of uh, permanent b on a ship now we are aware uh, concentrate your attention to the diagram first diagram on the left hand side where the laser pointer is right now let's assume that this ship is being built in the yard on a northerly heading if it is built in a northerly heading the lines of force will be entering from the stern of the ship and leaving from the bow of the ship giving the stern a blue polarity and the bow a red polarity now if the ship was built on a southerly heading then in that case you will have a blue bow and a red stern now these poles which are generated are permanent poles so depending upon whether the ship was built on a northerly heading or a southerly heading you will have a blue bow or a red bow now when the ship has magnetism in this particular way it has a blue bow and a red stern how does this magnetism affect our compass if you look carefully this is the permanent magnetism of the ship in the horizontal fore and aft direction what causes permanent b so let us see its effect on our magnetic compass now this is a diagram which is uh, showing us this is the deviation diagram for coefficient b it is showing us a ship which has a blue bow you see everywhere uh, at the bow we have a blue pole and this ship is having a red stern so this tells us that this particular ship was built on a southerly heading so just now as we saw in the previous uh, slide a ship which is built on southerly heading will have a blue bow the lines of force will be entering there and a red stern now how does this permanent magnetic field of the ship in the horizontal direction fore and aft direction going to affect our compass let us uh, see it uh, heading by heading now with the ship heading in the northerly direction we have a blue bow and we have a red stern the compass needle is uh, shown in the middle of the ship we know that the end of the compass needle pointing towards north is the red end and the one pointing towards the south is the blue end so we have the compass needle now when the ship is heading north these blue and red poles of the ship are exactly north and south of our compass needle so being exactly north and south of the compass needle they do not generate any deviation at all so there is no deviation on the northerly heading let's now assume the vessel has moved to a northeasterly heading in this particular direction now the blue pole has gone northeast northeast of the compass 
and this blue pole is going to attract the red pole of our compass and the compass is going to deviate towards east so you have a easterly deviation the same thing happens with the red pole the red pole of the ship permanent magnetism red pole of the ship has gone to southwest of the compass and it attracts the blue end of the compass towards it giving the compass a easterly deviation so you can see now on a north easterly heading a easterly deviation is generated when the ship goes to a easterly heading 090 heading now you see the blue pole is to the east of the compass and the red pole is to the west of the compass they are at right angles to the poles of the earth and now in this location they generate maximum deviation the blue pole at the bow attracts the north end or the red end of the compass towards it and the red pole at the stern attracts the south end of the compass towards it giving it maximum easterly deviation when the ship heads in a south easterly direction in a south easterly direction the blue bow goes to southeast of the compass and this blue bow repels the blue end of the compass needle that is the south end of the compass needle similarly the red pole of the ship at the stern repels the north end of the magnetic needle again giving it a easterly deviation but the magnitude of the easterly deviation starts to reduce now because the ship's poles are coming in line with the magnetic field of the earth maximum deviation is generated when the ship's poles are at right angles to the magnetic field of the earth which happened on easterly heading and uh, minimum deviation is generated when the poles are aligned with the poles of the earth which happened on northerly heading if ship pole and earth pole are aligned there will be no deviation at all and if the ship's poles and earth poles are at right angles there will be maximum deviation so that's why in the south easterly heading the deviation is reduced now but it is still easterly when the ship goes on southerly heading uh, even though the blue pole is closer to the blue end of the compass needle and the red pole is closer to the red end of the compass needle they are still not able to generate any deviation the red and red poles are repelling blue and blue poles are repelling but the strength of the poles of the ship is much 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 weaker as compared to the strength of the earth's poles so that is why they are not able to turn the compass needle by 180 degrees if the ship's field was more powerful it would turn the compass needle by 180 degrees and the needle will start pointing south but uh, since these poles are much weaker the magnetism of the ship is much weaker as compared to the magnetism of the earth they are not able to generate any deviation at all when the ship goes on south westerly heading you can now see that the blue pole at the bow repels the blue end of the compass needle similarly the red pole at the stern of the ship repels the red end of the compass needle generating a westerly deviation when the ship is heading in the westerly direction this westerly deviation becomes maximum because the poles of the ship are at right angles to the poles of the earth the blue pole and the rest of the compass needle attracts the red end towards it generating a westerly deviation similarly the red end red pole of the ship at the stern attracts the blue end of the compass needle generating a westerly deviation so maximum westerly deviation is generated on westerly heading the ship going on north westerly heading the deviation is still westerly but the magnitude is reduced because the ship's poles are now coming in line with the magnetic poles of the earth 
coming back to north the deviation becomes zero so you see from 000 to 180 the deviation was easterly and from 180 to 360 the deviation was westerly this is what we mean by a semi circular deviation for one semi circular the deviation has a single name for another semi circle the deviation has a opposite name so there therefore it is called as a semi circular deviation now another important thing which you can see from this diagram is that these poles of the ship also affects the directive force at the compass location what is this directive force directive force is the strength of the magnetic field at the compass location which makes it point towards the north direction now with the vessel heading on the northerly heading on the northerly heading you can see that the poles of the ship are matching with the poles of the earth the earth's north pole is a blue pole and the ship structure also has a blue pole north of the compass so this blue of the earth and blue of the ship are adding up increasing the magnetic field similarly south of the compass we have the red magnetic pole of the earth and the ship's pole is also red so earth's red and ship's red they also add up to the directive force so in this particular heading northerly heading the directive force is increased to its maximum when the ship goes on easterly heading in the easterly heading the red and blue poles of the ship are neither north of the compass nor south of the compass they are exactly east west of the compass being east west of the compass they do not have any effect on the directive force so the directive force is unchanged at this particular location now with the ship heading in the southerly direction you see now the poles of the ship are opposite to the poles of the earth south of the compass we have the blue pole of the ship and the red pole of the earth north of the compass we have the red pole of the ship and the blue pole of the earth so with the ship pole and the earth pole becoming opposite the directive force is reduced so there is a maximum reduction in the directive force with the ship heading in the southerly direction so moving on to the correction of uh, coefficient b coefficients are always corrected on the heading on which they produce maximum deviations now the first thing which the compass adjuster needs to uh, know is on which heading should i correct coefficient b so we should always remember coefficients are always corrected on the heading on which they produce maximum deviation now coefficient b produces maximum de deviation on easterly or westerly heading so that is where it is corrected for the coefficient to cause maximum deviation it should act perpendicular to the needle you remember on easterly or westerly heading the blue and red pole of the ship are at right angles to the magnetic field of the earth or they are acting perpendicular to the compass needle giving maximum deviation now basic principle which is followed in correcting the compass is to cure like with like now what do we mean by curing like with like it means permanent magnetism deviation are cured or corrected by using permanent magnets induced deviations are corrected or cured using induced magnet so permanent is corrected with permanent induced is corrected with induced so same thing is mentioned here permanent deviation is cured or corrected with permanent magnets induced deviation is corrected with induced magnetism permanent magnetic field is therefore corrected using fore and aft permanent magnets which are placed horizontally
Now these magnets are so placed as to produce a permanent magnetic field at the compass location exactly equal and opposite to that of the ship. Now how we do that? Let us try to understand using this diagram. In this diagram, we see the same ship which we discussed for deviation. This ship is having a blue bow and it is having a red stern. Now you see the binnacle. This is the binnacle and the compass is fitted at this particular location. Now these blue and red poles, why were they generated? Because this particular ship was constructed on a southerly heading and during its construction, it acquired these permanent poles. Now because of this blue and red poles of the ship, a magnetic field is generated. You can follow the laser pointer. The laser pointer now is moving on the magnetic field generated by the permanent poles of the ship. You see the magnetic field lines come out of the red pole and they go back into the blue pole. That is how the magnetic field lines are acting at the compass location. So what we do to correct it, we use fore and aft permanent magnets. We place them in the pinnacle just below the compass and we place them in such a way that their poles are opposite to the poles of the ship. So we had uh, the blue pole at the bow when we place these characters, we place the blue pole towards the stern. You see, we have red pole of the character magnet towards the bow. So when you place these magnets in the pinnacle, they generate a correcting field. Right now, the laser pointer is on the correcting field. And you can see that the direction of the correcting field is opposite to the direction of the deviating field. So when you place these corrector magnets in the binnacle in the fore and aft direction with their poles opposite to the poles of the ship. Forward of the ship had a blue pole. Forward of this corrector has a red pole. So with the poles opposite to the poles of the ship, they generate a opposite field, thus correcting the deviation caused because of permanent B. So go ahead with your doubts better. They are bar magnets of circular cross section. They are eight inches long and they come in two thicknesses, either three by eight inches or three by 16 inches diameter. So where more powerful magnets are uh, required, we use the thicker ones that is three by eight inches or where less powerful uh, characters are required. We use three by 16 inches diameter magnets. The size is decided by the compass adjuster. Once the ship is constructed and it goes out for sea trials, the compass adjuster checks the magnetism of the ship and decides upon whether he wants a thicker character or a thin character magnet. Slots are provided in the binnacle below the compass and the magnets are placed two in a row side by side. So when we place these character magnets, they are always placed in pairs. So one of the magnets is slightly to the starboard of the compass. Another magnet is to slightly port of the compass. They are always placed in pairs. Now, why are they placed in pairs? The reason for that is exactly in the middle of the binnacle or exactly below the compass, you have a periscope which is going into the wheelhouse. It is with the help of the periscope that you are able to see the magnetic compass at the helmsman location from the bridge. So because of this periscope, we cannot have the character magnet exactly below the compass location. Exactly better diagram of a, a binnacle. Now you see this particular plate which is fitted here. This plate carries the orthward ship magnet tray. This is for correction of coffee. Ship. Now you see this particular plate which is fitted here. 
this plate carries the outward shape magnet ray this is for correction of coefficient c and you see this particular plate which is fitted here now this plate carries the fore and aft magnets fore and aft magnets correcting coefficient permanent b so when you open this uh, plate you will have access to these magnets now you can see these magnets here these are the magnets which are fore and aft magnets here fore and aft magnets you see this is the uh, pipe which is going down the periscope pipe also you see a small bucket hanging with the chain this is known as a healing error bucket so this is how the corrector magnets are placed to correct coefficient b permanent b okay beta so any doubts till now beta let's now move on to the second part of coefficient b that is induced b induced b is caused by horizontal fore and aft magnetic field at the compass due to the induced magnetism in the vertical soft iron forward or aft of the compass so you see again it is a horizontal to the second part of coefficient b that is induced b induced b is caused by horizontal fore and aft magnetic field at the compass due to the induced magnetism in the vertical soft iron forward or aft of the compass so you see again it is a horizontal fore and aft magnetic field but it is generated because of induced magnetism in the vertical soft iron forward or aft of the compass let me show you how it is generated the vertical soft iron which we have on ship could be the forward mast it could be a crane it could be the funnel or it could be a aft mast or a crane aft of the compass let's now move on to the second part of coefficient b that is induced b. induced b is caused by horizontal fore and aft magnetic field at the compass due to the induced magnetism in the vertical soft iron forward or aft of the compass so you see again it is a horizontal fore and aft magnetic field but it is generated because of induced magnetism in the vertical soft iron forward or aft of the compass let me show you how it is generated the vertical soft iron which we have on ship could be the forward mast it could be a crane it could be the funnel or it could be a aft mast or a crane aft of the compass location now all these vertical structures will be induced by the magnetic field of the earth by the vertical component z component of the earth if this particular ship is in northern hemisphere the lines of force go vertically downwards so they will be entering from the top end of the vsi and leaving out from the bottom end of the vsi so the top end where they are entering gets a blue polarity and the bottom end where they are leaving out gets a red polarity so you see all the top poles of the vertical structures are blue the top pole of the funnel is blue the top pole of the forward mast aft mast or the cranes is blue the bottom poles of all these vertical structures are red poles now out of these two what affects our <coughs> compass is the one the pole which is closer to the compass and in this case the top of the poles the top poles which are the blue poles are almost in line with the magnetic compass and they affect our compass if the same vessel goes in the southern hemisphere now in the southern hemisphere the magnetic lines of force come out of the earth surface so you see with the same vertical structures 
in the southern hemisphere the polarity is going to change the lines will now enter from the bottom of these vertical structures giving it a blue polarity and it will come out from the top of these vertical structures giving it a red polarity so these being uh, induced magnets their polarity changes when the vessel changes from northern hemisphere to southern hemisphere so as we discussed uh, just now the compass is generally situated at level with the top poles of the masts and the funnel the top poles therefore affect the compass more as compared to the bottom poles of these vertical soft iron structures we are aware that the compass is affected by that pole of the magnet which is closer to it so we can see that the compass is situated in line or at level with the top poles of these vertical soft iron structures so the top poles affect the compass more and the bottom poles being far away do not affect our compass uh second thing to note is that funnel is the largest vertical soft iron structure on board we may have the masts we may have the cranes aft mast but the amount of steel which is used in construction of the funnel is much much more as well as the size of the funnel is much much more as compared to the size of masts or cranes so therefore funnel affects our compass most predominantly among all the vertical soft iron structure so the effect of the funnel being the most predominant is considered mainly for induced b so compass needle and the compass needle turns anti clockwise or a westerly deviation is generated when the ship goes to easterly heading on a easterly heading the blue pole of the funnel is at right angles to the field of the earth it is exactly west of the compass it is right angles to the field of the earth and it provides or generates the maximum deviation this blue pole of the funnel attracts the red end of our compass magnet and repels the blue end of our compass magnet generating maximum westerly deviation when the ship goes on south easterly heading in a south easterly heading the funnel blue pole is to the northwest of our compass and uh, again the blue end or blue pole of the funnel attracts the red end of our compass needle and uh, a westerly deviation is generated but the westerly deviation now starts to reduce why the westerly deviation reduces is because the blue pole which is generating this deviation is now no more at right angles to the field of the earth and it has started coming in line with the earth's magnetic field any pole when it generates deviation it generates maximum deviation when it is at right angles to the field of the earth so when it is at right angles to earth's magnetic field it will generate maximum deviation and when it is aligned with the earth's magnetic field earth's magnetic field is running north south so when a pole comes north or south of the compass needle it does not generate any deviation at all so when the ship goes on southerly heading on southerly heading the blue pole of the funnel comes exactly north of our compass north of the compass needle and since it is aligned with the magnetic field of the earth now it does not generate any deviation at all will repel each other and unlike poles will attract each other right okay this blue attracts the red uh, pole of our compass magnet the compass needle and it generates a easterly deviation now so easterly deviation is generated 
when the ship moves on 270 heading ship is heading west then the blue pole of the funnel is now exactly east of our compass needle so at this location it is at right angles to the earth's field it attracts the red end of our compass needle and repels the blue end of our compass needle the compass needle turns clockwise and generating a easterly deviation at this point the easterly deviation is maximum what is the reason for that because the pole which is generating the deviation is at right angles to the magnetic field of the earth when the ship goes on northwesterly heading this blue pole has come southeast of the compass needle and uh, it now repels the blue end of our compass needle generating a easterly deviation but the amount or magnitude of the deviation is reduced now because the pole is no more at right angles to the earth's field and it has started coming in line with the field of the earth so we can see that the deviation which is generated is semicircular from 000 to 180 the deviation generated is westerly a westerly deviation is generated and from 180 to 360 a easterly deviation is generated maximum deviation is generated on easterly and westerly courses and zero deviation is generated on northerly and southerly courses so you can see it is proportional to sine of the compass course sine 90 or sine 270 has a magnitude of 1 and sine 0 and sine 180 are 0 so it is proportional to the sign of the compass course now how does uh, this ib affects the directive force you see with the ship heading in the northerly direction this blue pole of the funnel is opposite to or is opposing the south pole which is of red polarity the south pole of the earth is of red polarity the pole on the funnel is blue polarity so with these poles having opposite polarity it reduces the directive force when the ship is heading south then the blue pole of the funnel and the blue pole of the earth they match increasing the directive force at the compass location so whenever the ship is on a northerly component heading northeast north or northwest the directive force is reduced because this funnel's blue pole is uh, southward of the compass giving or reducing the directive force whereas when the ship is on a southerly component heading southeast south or southwest the directive force is increased because the blue pole of the funnel is north of the compass needle so beta have a good look now and uh, procedure the concept behind the correction of induced b we use uh, like cures like principle that means permanent deviation is corrected using a permanent magnet induced deviation is corrected using a induced magnet now since uh, this induced b is generated because of magnetism in the vertical soft iron we will use the soft iron for correction of ip so vertical soft iron is used for correction and it is used in the form of flinders bar the value of induced magnetism depends upon the length of the soft iron hence the length of the flinders bar is varied as per the correction required now when we are doing a correction with permanent magnets we can easily control the magnitude of correction by increasing or decreasing the number of magnets used but what to do in case of a soft iron or in case of induced magnetism the magnetism which will be induced is not in our control it is dependent upon the magnetic field of the earth so how can it be uh, controlled or magnitude changed now that can be done by changing the length of the soft iron which is used as a corrector 
the longer the soft iron the more induced magnetism it is going to attain or have so if we require a greater correction then we use a longer flinder bar and in case the correction required is uh, minute then we can shorten the length of the flinder bar as per our requirement now going uh, more into uh, analyzing the flinder bar the flinder bar is placed inside a brass case uh, it could be a brass case or it could be a plastic or it could be any material which is non magnetic now all the items which are used close to the magnetic compass in the binnacle even the nails and screws which are used they are made up of non magnetic material only the correctors which we are using they are either the permanent magnets or they are the uh, soft iron uh, uh, rods or soft iron structures other than that all the other parts of the binnacle are made up of non magnetic material so flinder bar is placed inside a brass case or a non magnetic case and its length is 610 mm and uh, this uh, casing is attached to the binnacle the soft iron bars which are put into this casing are provided in pieces it is not that they provide us with a single length uh, uh, flinder bar which is 610 mm long what is provided is they break up the 610 mm into small portions or small parts so that the compass adjuster can use the required parts or the required length of the flinder bar so i'll explain to you how this is used now the flinder bar which is provided is in pieces the first piece is 305 mm then the next piece is 152 mm then we have a piece of 76 mm 38 mm and then there are two pieces of 19 mm making a total of 610 mm now why are these provided in uh, uh, small pieces because as we just now saw to vary the magnitude of correction we can change the length of the flinder bar so once these pieces are provided to us we can use whatever pieces we require and the other pieces can be kept as spare so this is the approach behind providing the pieces now how are these pieces utilized when a flinder bar is supplied on the ship along with these soft iron bars of these dimensions a complete set of wooden pieces of the same dimensions are also provided so you will have wooden pieces of all these dimensions along with the soft iron bars also provided now this is uh, uh, given to help us vary the length of the soft iron as per our requirement now on a ship which has a, a very big funnel huge funnel let us say we have a vlcc and it it has got a huge funnel now if the funnel is quite big that tells us that the induced p on that particular ship is going to be substantial so we may require a flinder bar close to maybe 500 or 600 600 mm now on another uh, vessel which has a very small engine and has a very small funnel the correction required may not be very much so we may require just about let us say 100 or 200 mm of the flinder bar so these wooden pieces help us to vary the dimension or length of the flinder bar now let's move on to our next coefficient which is coefficient c coefficient c is the maximum value of the semi circular deviation which varies as the cosine of the compass course it is caused by the horizontal outward shift component of the ship's magnetic field now if you look at the definition carefully 
you will understand and realize that this definition is very much similar to coefficient b in fact coefficient c is almost having the same properties as we discussed in coefficient b with only one difference bravo and charlie both these coefficients are exactly similar with only one difference coefficient c is dependent upon or is related to the outward ship component of the ship's magnetic field the last coefficient which we discussed that is coefficient b it was dependent upon the fore and aft component of the ship's magnetic field and coefficient c is dependent upon the outward ship component of the ship's magnetic field exactly like coefficient b which had two components the coefficient c also has two components coefficient c comprises of permanent c as well as induced c so is it clear up to here beta moving on to permanent c permanent c is caused by the q component of the ship's permanent magnetism we have uh, three components of the ship's permanent magnetism that is p q and r p component lies in the fore and aft direction q component lies in the outward ship direction and r component lies in the vertical direction or orientation so this is caused by the q component that is the outward ship component of the ship's permanent magnetism now to understand it uh, uh, more clearly let's assume that we have a ship which is built in a yard on a easterly heading now if the ship is built on a easterly heading the magnetic lines of force will be entering into the ship's hull from the starboard side so because of that the starboard side will acquire blue polarity and the magnetic lines of force will be leaving out or coming out of the port side of the ship so it will acquire a permanent red pole on the port side and a permanent blue pole on the starboard side if a ship is built on a westerly heading for a vessel built on a westerly heading it will have the poles in the opposite direction that means you will have a blue pole on the port side of the ship where the lines of force will be entering and you will have a red pole on the starboard side of the ship where the magnetic lines of force will be coming out you can see the deviation is proportional to coefficient c multiplied by cos of the compass course so is this part clear beta yes sir yes yep okay c cos course let's now try to understand the deviation caused by coefficient c that is permanent c now we are considering a ship which is built on a easterly heading just now we saw that a ship which is built on a easterly heading will have a blue pole on the starboard side and it will have a red pole on the port side so you can see this ship in the diagram on different headings cardinal and intercardinal headings and the starboard side of the ship has a blue polarity and the port side of the ship has a red polarity you see the compass needle uh, fitted on the ship the north end of the compass needle which points towards the north is of red polarity so you can see the red end pointing towards north and the end of the compass needle towards the south direction has a blue polarity so you can see the blue polarity and pointing towards south so let's try to analyze the deviation caused by this outward ship magnetism that is permanent c on different headings let us first consider the deviation caused on the northerly heading so ship is heading north you can see this topmost diagram shows the vessel heading in the northerly direction now when the ship is heading in the northerly direction 
you can see that the blue pole of the ship which is on the starboard side of the ship is east of the compass needle now this blue pole of the ship is going to attract the red end of the compass needle and the compass needle is going to swing clockwise looking from top the compass needle is going to swing clockwise which is easterly deviation likewise on the port side you see on the port side we have the blue polarity of the ship's magnetism sorry the red polarity of the ship's magnetism we have the red end and uh, this red pole of the ship's permanent magnetism is going to repel the red end of the magnetic needle and again it adds on to or it complements the clockwise swinging of the compass needle looking from top so we have a easterly deviation here the red end on the port side repels the red end or the north end of the magnetic needle and at the same time it attracts the south end or the blue end of the magnetic needle resulting in the compass needle swinging clockwise looking from top generating easterly deviation and another important thing to note here is that these red and blue pole of the ship on the sides of the ship are at right angles to the compass needle or you can say they are at right angles to the direction of the earth's magnetic field and when these poles the ship's poles are at right angles to the magnetic field of the earth they generate maximum deviation so maximum easterly deviation is generated when the ship is on a northerly heading 000 heading now let's take the ship on the easterly heading let us assume that the vessel is now heading 090 so on the easterly heading you see in this part of the diagram the blue and red poles which are present on the sides of the ship the blue pole is on the starboard side and the red pole is on the port side of the ship these poles are now exactly in line with the magnetic compass needle the red pole is north of the compass needle and the blue pole is exactly south of the compass needle now since these poles are exactly in line with the magnetic field of the earth they will not be able to generate any deviation at all deviation can only be generated when the poles are at some angle to the earth's magnetic field or at some angle to the compass needle so in this case no deviation is generated so that's why you see it is mentioned here no deviation now you can see there is a red pole on the ship's port side which is exactly north of the compass needle the north end of the compass needle is also red so if this was the only thing affecting the magnetic needle that is these red and blue pole of the ship this red pole will try to repel the compass needle and it will try that the compass needle should point exactly southwards because the red will be repelling the red end of the compass needle and it will be attracting the blue end of the compass needle likewise you see the starboard end starboard end of the ship which has a blue polarity will try to repel the blue end of the compass needle and it will also try to make the compass needle swing by 180 degrees pointing due south but that does not happen that does not happen because the ship's poles are much 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 weaker as compared to the poles of the earth the magnetic poles of the earth are much much stronger as compared to the ship's magnetic field thus these ship's magnetic poles are not able to generate any deviation at all tension to the ship heading in the westerly direction now in the westerly direction you see the situation is more or less the same the poles are exactly north or south of the compass needle the only difference in this case is that the blue pole is north of the compass needle now and the red pole is south of the compass needle now in this condition also with the ship heading in the westerly direction no deviation is generated because the ship's poles are exactly in line with the magnetic field of the earth or they are exactly in line with the compass needle when the poles are in line with the magnetic field of the earth or the compass needle 
they are not able to generate any deviation at all. So on the westerly heading, no deviation is generated. Now let's go to ship on the southerly heading. We have the ship on the southerly heading here in this part of the diagram. Now when the ship is heading south, you can see that these red and blue poles of the ship are now at right angles to the compass needle or at right angles to the magnetic field of the earth. So when these are at right angles, they will generate maximum deviation. So what type of deviation will be generated here? You see the starboard end of the ship or the starboard side of the ship has a blue polarity. This blue is going to attract the red end of the compass needle towards it. So the north end of the compass needle is attracted towards the port side of the ship and the south end of the compass needle which also has a blue polarity is repelled away from this blue pole of the ship. Thus the compass needle now swings anti-clockwise generating a westerly deviation. Likewise the red pole which is there on port side of the ship repels the red pole or the north pointing pole of the compass needle and attracts the blue pole of the compass needle. So thus adding on to this anti-clockwise swing of the compass needle or adding on to the westerly deviation generated. So you can see when the ship is on southerly heading, westerly deviation is generated and since the poles are at right angles to the compass needle, this deviation generated is the maximum deviation. Let's take one intercardinal heading also. If you take the ship on a northeasterly heading, northeasterly heading, you can see on the northeasterly heading, the port side of the ship having a red polarity is now northwest of the compass needle, and it will repel the red end of the compass needle, generating a easterly deviation. Likewise, the blue end on the starboard side of the ship repels the blue end of the compass needle. This is southeast of the compass needle now, again generating an easterly deviation. So again an easterly deviation is generated, but this easterly deviation is lesser than what it was on the northerly heading. Because on the northerly heading, the ship's poles were at right angles to the compass needle, whereas on northeasterly heading, the ship's poles are not at right angles, they are at a 45 degree angle now to the compass needle. So you can see this happening on the other uh, intercardinal directions also. So what we observe here is that maximum easterly deviation is generated on the ship heading north. When the ship is heading northeast, this easterly deviation reduces. With the ship heading in the east direction, the deviation is zero, nil deviation. When the ship heads in the southeast direction, now a westerly deviation is generated. The deviation has changed its name now. When the ship is heading in the southerly direction, maximum westerly deviation is generated. With the ship heading in the southwest direction, again you have a westerly deviation. With the ship heading in the westerly direction, 270, you have no deviation at all. And with the ship heading on the northwest heading, the needle or the compass has a easterly deviation. So you can see from 270 going up to 090 for this semicircle, the deviation is easterly. And from 090 onwards going up to 270 in this semicircle, the deviation is westerly. So this tells us this is a semicircular deviation and it also tells us that the deviation is proportional to cos of the compass course. Cos of 0 and cos of 180 is of maximum magnitude. That's why you see maximum deviation here. Cos of 90 and cos of 270 has 0 magnitude. That's why you see 0 deviation on both these headings. The result of these magnetic fields or the magnetism of the ship on the directive force. Let's now see the correction of uh, this particular coefficient. Now some important points which we are aware of is the coefficients are always corrected on the heading on which they produce maximum deviation. 
for the coefficients to produce or generate maximum deviation it should be acting perpendicular to the compass needle or to the magnetic field of the earth now in our case you can see the maximum deviation is being generated on northerly heading and on the southerly heading it is on north and south heading that the poles of the ship are at right angles to the magnetic compass so this coefficient would be corrected on a northerly heading or on a southerly heading basic principle which is followed in correcting a compass is to cure like with like that is a permanent deviation is cured with permanent magnetism and induced deviation is cured with induced magnets so in our case this is being generated because of permanent magnetism of the ship so we will be using a permanent magnet to correct coefficient permanent c or p c so as we just now saw cure like with like principle is used in the correction pc which is caused by ships outward ship horizontal permanent magnetic field is therefore corrected using outward ship permanent magnets placed horizontally they are so placed as to produce a permanent magnetic field at the compass location which is exactly equal and opposite to that of the ship now in the diagram you see this ship uh, we are looking at the ship from the stern you see we have a blue pole on the starboard end of the ship and we have a red pole on the port end of the ship this was generating coefficient permanent c now on top you see this represents the binnacle of the magnetic compass and in the binnacle we keep the corrector magnet this small magnet on top is the corrector magnet which is placed the holes are made in the binnacle in the outward ship direction and these magnets are placed in those holes making sure that the ends of the corrector magnet are opposite to the ends of the ship's permanent magnetism in the outward ship direction the the magnets which are used for correction are exactly similar to the ones which were used for correcting permanent b so these outward ship magnets are bar magnets of circular cross section which are 8 inches long and having 3 by 8 inch or 3 by 16 inch diameters two thicknesses are usually provided by the compass makers in case a powerful magnet is required then we will be using the 3 by 8 inch configuration and in case we need a, a not very powerful magnet a 3 by 16 inch diameter magnet can be used slots are provided in the binnacle below the compass and the magnets are placed two in a row side by side this is exactly as we corrected the permanent b only difference was in permanent b the magnets were placed in the fore and aft direction in correcting permanent c the magnets are placed in the outward ship direction to the second component of coefficient c coefficient charlie which is induced c in short known as ic ic or induced c is caused by a horizontal outward ship magnetic field due to the induced magnetism in the vertical soft iron to port or to starboard of the compass location so you see in this case very similar to coefficient uh, ib ib was caused because of a vertical structure which is forward or aft of the compass and ic is caused because of a vertical structure which is port or starboard of the compass practically ic does not exist on a merchant vessel as the vertical soft iron to port and starboard of the ship center line if it is there is symmetrically placed so practically you see a uh, coefficient induced c or ic is not present on most of the merchant vessels because uh, number 1 there is hardly any prominent vertical soft iron structure to port or to the starboard of the compass location 
forward or aft of the compass, we have substantial uh, VSI, big VSI structures. It could be the mast, it could be a crane or a derrick kind of uh, structure. But port and starboard of the compass location, we usually do not have a prominent vertical soft iron structure. So if that structure is not there, coefficient IC or induced C will not be generated. This coefficient induced C or IC may be present on special type of ships where compass is placed off the center line. For example, uh, in ships like aircraft carriers, you see in the aircraft carriers to provide space for the runway, the bridge is off-centered to starboard or to port. And because of this, the compass location is also not on the center line, but it is offset to either port or starboard. Now, in such a case, you can see in the diagram, the compass is placed off center and the ship's fore and aft center line bulkhead acts as a vertical structure in this case and the induced magnetism generated by this vertical soft iron to port or starboard of the compass does generate induced C. Let's now discuss the deviation. Let's now discuss the deviation generated because of uh, coefficient IC induced C. We have assumed a ship which is having a vertical structure to starboard of the compass location. So you can see here we have a vertical structure to starboard of the compass location. And uh, this is a soft iron structure. And we are assuming that the ship is somewhere in the northern hemisphere. Now we know that in the northern hemisphere, the magnetic lines of force they re-enter into the earth's surface. So these magnetic lines of force will be entering from top of the vertical structure and will be going out from the bottom of the vertical structure. Now since the top of the vertical structure is close to the compass location, this is what affects our magnetic compass. And in this case, with the ship being in the northern hemisphere, magnetic lines of force entering from top of the vertical structure they give a blue polarity to the top of VSI and that is why you see in the diagram we have a single blue pole to the starboard of the compass. You can see the ship in any of the cardinal and intercardinal heading. The ship is shown here on four cardinal and four intercardinal headings and in all these diagrams you will see a blue pole getting generated to starboard of the compass because of this vertical soft tire. If the same ship happens to go into the southern hemisphere, the polarity will change to a red pole. So that is how induced magnetism works. So let's now try to see the kind of deviation which this vertical soft iron structure generates. So let's assume the ship on a netherly heading first. Now with the ship on a netherly heading, you can see the compass needle represented by the red and blue poles arrow shown in the diagram. So this represents our compass needle and we have a blue pole to the starboard of the compass needle or to the east of the compass needle in this case. This blue pole attracts the red end or the north end of our magnetic compass needle and at the same time this blue pole repels the blue end or the south end of our magnetic needle, thus generating easterly deviation. Now the deviation generated at this location is maximum. A reason for deviation being maximum is that this blue pole is at right angles to the compass needle or it is at right angles to the earth's magnetic field line. Whenever the disturbing pole the blue pole or the red pole is at right angles to the earth's field or to the uh, magnetic compass, it generates maximum deviation. So we have maximum easterly deviation when the ship is on a north heading. Now, since the pole is uh, neither to the north of the compass nor to the south of the compass, 
it has no effect in the directive force the directive force can be affected by this pole if it is north of the compass or south of the compass but in this case it is perfectly aligned to the east of the compass location thus making no change in the directive force now let's assume the ship on a easterly heading so with a vessel on a easterly heading this blue pole now comes exactly south of the compass needle the blue pole is exactly south of the compass needle now this blue pole would try to repel the blue end of our compass needle it is close to the blue end of our compass needle it will try to repel it and if this was the only force affecting our compass the compass would have pointed towards south because this blue pole will try to attract the red pole of the compass but that is not the case uh, this pole is not able to generate any deviation at all because the earth's magnetic field which is much 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 more powerful as compared to this blue pole keeps the compass pointing in the northerly direction and the blue pole is not able to generate any kind of deviation for generating deviation the blue pole has to be at some angle to the magnetic lines of force it has to be either east or west of the compass needle so in this case it is exactly aligned with the compass needle and as well as the magnetic lines of force thus generating no deviation at all so beta will you be able to uh, understand the other ones uh, it is exactly the same as we did in uh, ib so shall i explain the other headings or can we move ahead and we can move ahead no coefficients are always corrected on the heading on which they produce maximum deviation in this case maximum deviation is generated on northerly or southerly heading so the correction is made on one of these two headings for the coefficient to cause maximum deviation it should act perpendicular to the needle so we have seen in the previous diagram that on northerly and southerly heading the pole is at right angles to the compass needle thus generating maximum deviation basic principle which is followed in correcting the compass is to cure like with like that is permanent deviation is cured with permanent magnets and induced deviation is cured with a induced magnet so this being a induced magnetism will be corrected using a induced magnet only a normal merchant vessel does not have ic therefore no correction is generally required however if the compass is badly placed ic will be present now this is corrected using the same principle as induced p thus a flinder bar can be placed port or starboard of the compass opposite to the side on which the outward ship vertical soft iron is predominant exactly the same thing was done in induced p also we placed a flinder bar opposite to the funnel so likewise in this case also we place a flinder bar which is opposite to the vsi structure to port or starboard of the compass location now one important stand here is that if a merchant vessel has both the coefficient ib as well as ic together we have a method with which both these coefficients can be corrected in one go instead of using two flinder bars the correction can be done using only a single flinder bar which will correct both these coefficients together induced p as well as induced c so how is this done let's see a merchant vessel will definitely have induced p because of the funnel the mast vertical structure fore and aft of the compass will certainly be present and it is corrected using a flinder bar forward or aft of the compass as required if induced c is also present then another flinder bar will be required to port or starboard of the compass opposite to the vsi it is very much convenient to use only a single flinder bar 
and slew it slew basically means turning it from the fore and aft line to port or starboard of the compass so the fundamental of this correction is that we take a single flinder bar instead of placing it forward of the compass we slew it or we turn it in a direction which is opposite to the resultant of ib as well as ic so once it is placed in that way this is able to correct this flinder bar single flinder bar is able to correct both these coefficients together now the certain which arises in our mind is how do we determine the angle by which the flinder bar should be slewed this is also called as the slew angle and direction in which the flinder bar should be slewed to clockwise or to anti clockwise these are the two things which we need to know before we correct a ib and ic combination using a single flinder bar now for this let us uh, understand it using one example let's assume that in the diagram you can see the laser pointer in the diagram this is the compass location where the laser pointer is right now now we have a funnel which is aft of the compass needle the ship is right now let's assume the ship is heading north 000 so we have the flinder bar at this particular location so this flinder bar is generating ib or induced p component so this vector represents the ib component now let's also assume that on this particular ship there is a vertical soft iron structure to starboard of the compass and that structure is present here at this particular location now this structure is going to cause induced c and this vector where the laser pointer is right now this vector represents the component or coefficient ic now if we take a resultant of these two coefficients the resultant can be easily obtained by making a parallelogram so if you make a parallelogram using these two ib and ic vectors the diagonal of the parallelogram this diagonal of the parallelogram gives us the resultant of these two forces now we can find out the magnitude of this resultant by using the pythagoras theorem it will be equal to the base square plus the perpendicular square under root that is ic square plus ib square under root will give us the magnitude of this effect which is the resultant effect of ib and ic also we can easily find out this angle this is the angle between the fore and aft line this is the fore and aft line and the resultant of ib and ic in the diagram we have represented it by capital m and this particular angle capital m basically gives us our slew angle we can easily find out this angle m now we know tangent theta is equal to perpendicular upon base so tangent of this angle m will be equal to the perpendicular you can see the perpendicular is basically the ic component and the base is the ib component so you see tangent of this angle will be equal to ic upon ib so you can see the formula here tangent of the slew angle is equal to ic upon ib so if we know the magnitude of ib and we know the magnitude of ic then we can easily calculate the slew angle the slew angle once calculated gives us the information how much turning or slew is required for the flinder bar now the flinder bar has to be placed in a direction which is opposite to the resultant of these two forces so opposite to the resultant we place the flinder bar somewhere here in this direction the magnitude of the flinder bar or the length of the flinder bar is decided by the magnitude of the resultant and the slew angle is this angle m 
which we have calculated using the formula tan of slope angle is equal to ic upon ib so is it clear beta now when we make the combined correction for ic and ib we have to also uh, find out what is the heading on which the ship should be when the correction is made now coefficients are always corrected on a heading on which they produce maximum deviation for the resultant of ic and ib to cause maximum deviation it should act perpendicular to the needle the compass needle always lies in the north south direction so for the force to act perpendicular to this direction this resultant vector should be acting in the easterly direction if this resultant vector is in the easterly direction it will be acting at right angles to the compass needle generating maximum deviation now for this resultant to lie in the easterly direction it has to swing by an angle or the vessel has to swing by an angle equal to 90 minus m you can see the laser pointer this is the angle by which the vessel has to be swung to the port side so that the resultant is acting in the easterly direction which is perpendicular to the compass needle heading north and south or aligned in the north and south direction generating maximum deviation so swing the ship 90 minus m degrees to port for the combined correction now another option which is available to us is if this resultant vector acts in the westerly direction if it acts in the westerly direction even then it will be acting at right angles to the compass needle and this will happen when the ship is on a reciprocal heading to the initial one if you swing the ship 90 minus m to port we obtain one of the headings and also on a heading reciprocal to that 180 degrees apart from that you will see that this is the second option available to us to correct ib and ic together and then i'm going to coefficient now is coefficient d coefficient delta coefficient d is the maximum value of quadrantal deviation now this is the first difference which you see in this particular deviation it is a quadrantal deviation coefficient bravo and charlie which we saw were semi circular deviation this one is a quadrantal deviation meaning every quadrant or every 90 degrees it changes its sign from east to west or west to east and it varies proportional to sine of twice the compass course or sine of 2 into compass course it is caused by a horizontal field due to induced magnetism in horizontal soft iron situated symmetrically about a 4 and 1/2 line through the compass now this coefficient is entirely generated by induced magnetism there is no contribution of permanent magnetism in this coefficient it is generated only by induced magnetism we have seen induced magnetism was responsible for coefficient a also but in that case it was not symmetrical soft iron it was unsymmetrical soft iron if it was present forward of the compass it was not present aft if it was present on port side of the compass it was absent on the starboard side whereas in this coefficient you see it is situated symmetrically about a four and a half line through the compass the induced magnetism also resulted in ib and ic but in both these cases we had the vertical soft iron forward or aft or port or starboard of the compass in this case it is not the vertical soft iron but the horizontal soft iron which generates coefficient delta beta let's take a short break 5 uh, minutes sir there is a important call coming in so let's meet after 5 minutes say 45 45 okay beta coefficient now is coefficient d coefficient delta 
coefficient d is the maximum value of quadrantal deviation uh, this we had covered last slide na? now let's go into the generation or the cause of the coefficient d generally hsi horizontal soft iron structure on merchant ships are transverse beams and fore and aft longitudinals or girders now out of these two the transverse beams are much more in number they are present in the length profile of the ship which is much much more as compared to the breadth profile of the ship the fore and aft longitudinal are present in the breadth profile so transverse beams are much much more in number as compared to the longitudinals and also the ends of the transverse beams are much closer to the compass making their effect much much more predominant now the first thing to appreciate here is that if we have a transverse beam and if we have a fore and aft longitudinal exactly similarly placed about a compass having the same size then they are going to cancel out the effect of each other if they are perfectly balanced equal to each other they are going to cancel out each other now that is not the case the transverse beams are much more in number and secondly their ends are closer to the compass location the ends of the fore and aft longitudinal are close to the bow and stern of the ship which are far away from the compass location whereas the beams stretch over the entire length of the ship and the ends of the beam are closer to the compass location as compared to the longitudinals so number 1 the beams are much more in number and number 2 their ends are closer so thus making the effect of the outward ship beam or transverse beam much much more predominant as compared to a fore and aft longitudinal so in our example when we understand the deviation generated by coefficient d we will be assuming one outward ship beam a horizontal soft iron and getting or understanding the deviation from there let's start deviation diagram for coefficient d so we have a ship here and in this ship we have represented one outward ship beam as we just discussed that their effect is much much more predominant as compared to the longitudinal so we are assuming a outward ship beam here on the ship we have the compass needle so you can see the red end of the compass needle pointing towards north and the blue end of the compass needle pointing towards the south direction so let's now first uh, concentrate on the northerly heading the vessel is on a northerly heading in this diagram now when the ship is heading north this outward ship beam is at right angles to the magnetic field lines of the earth the magnetic field lines are running from south to north and this beam is lying in the east west direction perpendicular to the earth's magnetic field now since it is perpendicular there is no induction or almost zero induction which happens on the beam if there is no induction no poles are generated and if there are no poles no deviation is generated so the deviation generated on northerly heading is zero let's now take the ship on a easterly heading so in this part of the diagram you see the vessel heading in a easterly direction now with the ship heading on a easterly direction this outward ship beam is now perfectly aligned with the magnetic field of the earth since it is perfectly aligned it will have the maximum induction maximum induction caused because of the earth's magnetic field the magnetic field lines will be entering from the south end or the starboard end of the beam and they will be coming out from the north end or the port beam end of the outward ship beam the magnetic lines of force entering from south generate a blue pole so we have a blue pole south of the compass needle and we have a red pole north of the compass needle now these blue and red poles are exactly south and north of the compass needle 
being exactly aligned with the compass needle they are not able to generate any deviation at all creating a deviation the pole has to be at some angle to the magnetic field line or to the compass needle in this case it is perfectly aligned even though the poles are most powerful in this case they are still not able to generate any deviation because these are aligned with the compass needle so the deviation generated is again nil zero deviation is generated now let's take the ship on a north easterly heading now with the vessel on a north easterly heading you see the outward ship beam is partially aligned with the magnetic field of the earth it is at a 45 degree angle to the earth's magnetic field now being partially aligned the poles which are generated they are partially powerful they are not at their maximum power they have partial power but at the same time these poles are at a 45 degree angle to the compass needle thus they are able to generate a deviation here the red pole which you see which is on the port side of the ship this red pole is towards the northwest of the compass needle and this red pole repels the red pole of our compass needle thus generating a easterly deviation likewise if you pay your attention to the blue pole the blue pole is southeast of the compass needle and this blue pole repels the blue end of the compass needle thus assisting in generating easterly deviation so easterly deviation is generated in this case with the vessel heading in the north easterly direction now this deviation which is generated here is the maximum easterly deviation why it is maximum you can easily understand it if the vessel changes its heading and moves toward the northerly heading as it moves toward the northerly heading you will see that the outward ship beam is lesser aligned with the magnetic field of the earth it is slowly approaching a 90 degree angle to the earth's magnetic field line and thus the power of these poles which are generated keeps on reducing the outward ship beam angle to the magnetic field line keeps on increasing thus reducing the induction and the poles becoming weaker and weaker because of the poles becoming weaker the deviation keeps on reducing now if the vessel swings to the starboard side and tries to approach the easterly direction the poles are becoming stronger but these poles are now coming in line with the magnetic needle now as they come in line with the magnetic needle they are not able to generate that much deviation and the deviation starts to decrease so maximum deviation is caused on the north easterly heading and zero deviation is caused on northerly heading as well as easterly heading now you can appreciate here the deviation is proportional to sine of twice the compass course when the heading is zero 2 into 0 is 0 again sine of 0 is 0 therefore zero deviation when the heading is 45 degrees 2 into 45 is 90 sin of 90 is 1 which is the maximum value generating maximum deviation here and when the vessel is heading in the easterly direction heading is 90 2 into 90 is 180 sin of 180 is again 0 thus giving us a zero deviation so two things which we realize here one the deviation is proportional to sin of twice the compass course second the deviation is quadrantal you see over one quadrant it was zero on the northerly heading became maximum easterly on the northeast heading and became zero again on the easterly heading going further if the ship swings to a south easterly direction we will see here that the deviation which is generated is of opposite name now we have a westerly deviation generated here so you can see these four quadrants showing the deviation generated and it tells us that this is a quadrantal deviation now the same principle can be applied to any of the other headings and you can appreciate the deviation being generated proportional to sin of twice the compass course now another important thing here is that uh, 
the directive force in this case is never increased on any heading you can check all the headings the directive force is not affected on some of the headings yeah, like you see on otherly heading there is no effect on the directive force whereas on northeasterly easterly and southeasterly headings the directive force is decreased so why is this decreased this is decreased because the blue end of the beam is aligned south of the compass needle where we have the red end of the arc since the pole of the beam is opposite in direction or opposite in polarity to the pole of the earth it reduces the directive force soft iron structures because of induced magnetism the correction is also done using a soft iron corrector since there is predominance of outward shape beams and also their ends are closer to the compass these have much more effect than the fore and aft longitudinals this effect is corrected by providing two soft iron spheres placed one on either side of the compass in the outward shape plane this will become all the more clear with the help of a diagram so we will discuss this correction using a diagram as we just now discussed the correction is done on any one of the intercardinal heading where the deviation caused due to coefficient d is maximum in the unlikely event of a ship having more longitudinals than the outward ship beams and the longitudinals becoming more powerful as compared to outward ship beams the spheres will be placed fore and aft of the compass now this could be very rare on some special type of ships where the structure of ship is such that the longitudinals are more in number as compared to the beams and also their ends are closer to the compass let's now try to understand coefficient d correction offered by the soft iron spheres so let's have the ship in our diagram you see the ship heading on a north easterly direction so why is the ship heading in the north easterly direction that's because all the coefficients are corrected on the heading where they are the strongest so we know coefficient d is the strongest on intercardinal headings that's why we have chosen a intercardinal heading and that is northeast let's now show the magnetic compass on our ship you can see the compass coming up the compass needle is visible on the screen now the north end of the compass needle having red polarity and the south end of the compass needle having the blue polarity let's now show the outward ship beam now this is the soft iron structures a outward ship beam which is responsible for generating coefficient d coefficient delta now since this beam is a soft iron structure it does not have any permanent magnetism or any permanent poles the magnetism in this beam is induced magnetism and it is generated by the magnetic field of the earth so let's now show the poles of the earth in our diagram you can see the south pole of the earth coming up on the screen at the bottom and it is having a red polarity and we can now see the north pole of the earth north magnetic pole of the earth coming up at the top of the screen having a blue polarity let's also show the magnetic lines of force in our diagram we are aware that the magnetic lines of force they come out of the red pole and they enter or they go towards the blue pole of the earth so you can see the magnetic field lines shown by these arrows the magnetic field lines are generating from the south pole of the earth the red pole 
and they are going into the magnetic north pole the blue pole of the earth now these magnetic lines of force will be inducing the outward shape beam present on the ship now the starboard end of the beam is the point where these magnetic lines of force are entering and we know we are aware that wherever the magnetic lines of force enter they generate a blue polarity so you can see a blue pole being generated at the starboard end of the soft iron outward ship b now the port side end of the outward ship beam is the point where the lines of force are leaving or going out of the beam and wherever the lines of force go out they generate a red pole or a red polarity so that's why you can see a red pole being generated at the port end of the outward ship b now these red and blue poles generated at the end of the beam are the ones which are causing coefficient d which are causing the deviation in our compass the red pole on the port end of the beam is repelling the north end of our magnetic compass needle red and red they repel each other and the needle turns clockwise looking from top the needle turns clockwise or in the easterly direction generating a easterly deviation likewise you see the blue pole which is generated on the starboard end of the outward ship beam repels the south end of our compass needle both having blue polarity blue repelling blue and again complementing the easterly deviation so the compass needle turns clockwise looking from top of the compass and it generates a easterly deviation now for correcting this deviation we use the principle of like cures like so we correct it using a soft iron corrector and in this case we use soft iron spheres so let's place the spheres you can see the spheres now coming up on the sides of the compass in the outward shape direction there is a sphere on the port side of the compass and you have the second sphere on the starboard side of the compass now these are soft iron spheres so they also do not have any permanent poles these spheres will also be induced by the earth's magnetic field lines the end of the sphere where the magnetic field lines enter will get a blue polarity so you see the south end of the sphere let's first uh, concentrate on the starboard side uh, corrector starboard side sphere you see the south end of the sphere right now where the laser pointer is is the uh, point where the magnetic lines of force are entering and thus generating a blue polarity in that direction the top end or the north end of the sphere is the point where the magnetic field lines are leaving or going out from the sphere thus generating a red polarity similarly if you have a look at the port side sphere the bottom end where the laser pointer is right now is the one where the magnetic lines of force are entering giving it a blue polarity and you can now see the points where the magnetic lines of force are leaving or coming out from the spheres they are having red polarity so we have the corrector spheres placed in the outward shape direction of the compass to port and starboard of the compass and we have these corrector spheres induced by the earth's magnetic field points where the earth's magnetic field lines are entering into the spheres have got blue polarity and the points where the magnetic lines of force are coming out of these soft iron spheres have got a red polarity now let's first concentrate on the starboard corrector sphere now this starboard corrector sphere is having both the magnets both the poles you have the red pole you as well as you have the blue pole now that pole of the corrector affects the magnetic compass which is closer to the compass now out of this red and blue pole of the starboard corrector the pole which is closer to the compass is the red pole so 
from the starboard corrector red pole is what is affecting the compass and this red pole is going to attract the south end of the compass towards it thus cancelling out the easterly deviation when the red pole of the corrector magnet the starboard corrector magnet attracts the south end of the compass needle south end has a blue polarity opposite poles attract so when it attracts the south end the compass needle turns anti clockwise thus cancelling out the deviation generated you can see the starboard end of the beam was having a blue polarity whereas the starboard soft iron corrector having a red pole closer to the compass is cancelling the effect of the outward ship b now let's take our attention to the port side corrector now in the port side corrector we are having both the poles blue pole as well as the red pole but the pole which is closer to the compass needle is the blue pole the blue pole is closer to the compass needle and this blue pole attracts the north red end of our magnetic compass needle north end of the compass needle having a red polarity corrector magnet pole closer to the compass having a blue polarity blue and red being opposite poles attract each other this also leads to the magnetic needle swinging anti clockwise looking from top thus cancelling out the deviation generated you can also have a look at the end of the outward ship beam the end of the outward ship beam was having a red polarity deviating our compass and the corrector magnet pole closer to the compass has a blue polarity which cancels out the effect of the outward ship b so you can now see the corrector magnets soft iron corrector magnets placed in the outward ship direction cancelling out the deviation generated because of the ends of the outward ship b sir instead of these pairs can we use plates brackets attached to the binnacle so that their centers are in the same plane as the plane of the compass the magnitude of the correction can be varied by shifting the spheres closer or farther from the compass so you can see the spheres placed in the outward ship direction you can see this is the bracket which is fitted you can see the channel also here likewise on the port side you have this sphere as well as the channel and the bracket so on the right side diagram you can see this is the bracket the channel there is a scale here on the channel which helps us to position correctly position the spheres at equal distance from the compass so these are the soft iron sphere correctors placed on the sides outward ship direction port and starboard of the compass to correct coefficient delta now coming to the question that why we use a spherical shape for the soft iron corrector the reason for using spherical shape is sphere is the most regular geometrical shape you look at a sphere from any aspect or from any angle from any direction it presents the same face or the same aspect so irrespective of the vessel heading in any direction the vessel rolling or pitching in any case whatsoever the sphere present a uniform correction in all the conditions so that is why the shape of the corrector which is chosen is spherical so you can see a actual compass uh, with a picture clicked right from top you can see the spheres placed on either side starboard side and the port side you can have a look at the channel also here you can see a slot provided this is the sliding channel there are uh, uh, nuts which are uh, fitted below these spheres and they can be tightened in location using those nuts you can also see the flinder bar which is forward of the compass location
so with this we complete coefficient uh, to the next coefficient which is coefficient e echo coefficient e is very very similar to coefficient delta very very similar to coefficient delta with only one difference it has you can assume it has a phase difference of 45 degrees coefficient delta was powerful or the strongest on intercardinal headings and it was zero on cardinal headings whereas coefficient echo is zero on intercardinal heading and it is maximum on the cardinal headings so very very similar coefficient e is the maximum value of quadrantal deviation it is again a quadrantal deviation which changes its name every 90 degrees which varies as the cos of twice the compass course it is caused by a horizontal field at the compass position due to induced magnetism in the horizontal soft iron situated symmetrically about a 45 degree line through the compass position so for generation of coefficient e we need to have a soft iron structure on the ship in this particular orientation you can see a a soft iron structure at a 45 degree angle to the fore and aft line or to the outward ship line so normal merchant vessel will not have any structure like these the fore and aft longitudinal as well as the outward ship beams are uh, generally the strength members of a normal merchant vessel so we will not have a substantial structure a soft iron structure at a 45 degree orientation and this is exactly the reason why coefficient t is absent in a normal merchant vessel or if you have a soft iron structure in this particular orientation at a 45 degree angle now this soft iron is uh, divided at the compass location so both these structures are usually absent on normal merchant vessels let's now see the deviation generated because of this structure so let's first have a look with the ship on a northeasterly heading when the vessel is on a northeasterly heading this structure is perfectly aligned with the magnetic field line of the ship thus generating very strong poles at both the ends of the soft iron structure but these poles are exactly north and south of the compass location thus generating no deviation at all for generating any deviation the poles generated should be at some angle to the north south line or at some angle to the magnetic field of the earth or to the magnetic needle and in this case this angle being zero no deviation is generated now let's take the ship on a easterly heading with the vessel on a easterly heading we can see that this structure is now partially aligned with the magnetic field of the earth partially aligned so the poles generated are of the partial power but these poles are at a 45 degree angle this is where maximum deviation is generated by these poles so on the easterly heading you see maximum deviation is generated in the previous case with the vessel heading in the north easterly direction the deviation generated was zero so on a intercardinal heading the deviation generated is zero on a cardinal heading the deviation generated is maximum now let's take the ship on a south easterly heading when the ship goes on a south easterly heading you see this structure is now at right angles to the magnetic field of the earth so being at right angles the induction is zero negligible no poles are generated with no poles being generated the deviation generated is also zero so nil deviation on south easterly heading so you see zero deviation on the intercardinal heading and maximum deviation on the cardinal heading if you look closely this entire deviation diagram is very much similar to the diagram of coefficient delta as if the coefficient delta diagram has been rotated by 45 degrees so that's why i said there is a 45 degrees phase difference between delta and echo so clear beta is that clear 
in play in 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 case of coefficient e the structure is at a 45 degree angle so that's why the character are also placed at a 45 degree angle to the four and a half line so in this diagram you can see this is the case we discussed in the deviation diagram we have a structure in this particular way the soft iron spheres are placed in the same orientation thus cancelling out the effect of the soft iron structure now beta the last important thing about coefficient is on a particular shape coefficient d and coefficient e delta and eco both these coefficients are present together when both coefficient delta and eco are present they can be corrected by using a single set of spheres we do not need to use two separate set of spheres coefficient delta is corrected by placing the spheres in the outward shape direction eco is corrected by placing the spheres at a 45 degree orientation to the four and a half line but if both of them are present they can be corrected using a single set of spheres which are slewed or turned to some intermediate angle in the direction of the resultant of both these coefficients now how do we decide what is the direction in which the spheres should be placed if it was only delta the correction the placement was simple they need to be placed in the outward shape direction if it was only eco the orientation was similar to the structure present on the ship but if both are present a single set of sphere can be placed and slewed the slew angle is calculated by the formula tangent of twice the angle of slew is equal to coefficient eco divided by coefficient delta so whatever is the magnitude of eco divided by the magnitude of coefficient delta gives us tangent of twice the angle of slew so angle of slew can be obtained using this formula once the slew angle has been calculated the spheres are initially placed to correct coefficient delta for correcting coefficient delta the spheres are placed in the outward shape direction after correcting delta the spheres are now slewed by that particular angle now how do we decide whether the spheres are to be turned or slewed in the clockwise direction or the anti clockwise direction practically on board it is very simple once you have placed the spheres in the outward shape direction they should be slewed towards the direction of the structure which is at a 45 degree angle to the four and a half line so in whichever orientation the 45 degree soft iron structure is present the sphere should be slewed towards that structure theoretically it can also be obtained it can also be found if delta and eco are of the same sign both are easterly or both are westerly the spheres are slewed clockwise and if they are of opposite signs the spheres are slewed anti clockwise looking from top now after obtaining the slew angle after obtaining the direction in which the spheres are to be slewed the next question which the compass adjuster has to be clear about is what is the heading on which the ship should be when this combined correction is being done if it was only coefficient delta we know the vessel has to be on any one of the intercardinal heading that is where it is the strongest if it was only coefficient eco we know the vessel should be on some cardinal heading that is where coefficient eco is strongest but when we are having a combined correction of delta and eco what should be the heading of the ship now for this the maximum deviation due to delta and eco combined occurs when the spheres lie in the northeast or southwest direction of the compass location reason being that any horizontal soft iron will produce maximum deviation when they lie in the northeast southwest or northwest southeast of the compass 
location. And this using a diagram. Now, beta, this example which I am showing you, uh, this is one of the questions which uh, come in our paper. So, this is slightly tricky and complicated. So, if you want to take a short five minutes break, we can take that and then we can go ahead with this. So, now let's try to understand the combined correction of coefficient delta and echo. This concept using a, a actual question. On a ship, the soft iron spheres are observed to be placed in a relative direction 100 and 280 with respect to the ship's head. Analyze the cause for same and find the heading on which the sphere correction should be done. Uh, this is the actual question which has come in the past papers on this particular topic. So let's first try to understand what the uh, scenario is. What does the question mean? Let me show you a diagram. So we see the ship here and on the ship we have the compass. The circle which you see in the center represents the compass and the spheres are fitted on this ship in a relative direction of 100 and 280. This is a relative direction with respect to the ship's head. Let's assume for the time being that the ship is heading north. So this is the north direction as well as the ship's head and the spheres are lying in a direction 100. So from the ship's head going clockwise up to an angle of 100. This is where one of the sphere lies. And going further, 100, 120, 130, 180, then 270 and 280. This is the direction in which the second sphere lies. So we are now able to see what is the orientation or location of the spheres with respect to the compass. So the first thing they are asking in the question is analyze the cause for same. Now one thing which becomes clear to us is that on a normal merchant vessel the spheres are usually placed in the outward ship direction. That means in a relative 090270 direction. Now that happens when the ship only has coefficient delta. If coefficient echo is present, the spheres will be placed either northwest southeast or northeast southwest of the compass. We are aware that when both the coefficients are present, that is delta and echo, that is the case when the spheres are slewed at a particular angle and that is the situation here. So this clearly tells us that on this particular vessel, we have coefficient delta as well as coefficient echo. Both these coefficients are present on the ship and that is the reason why the spheres are slewed, they are fitted at an angle, not in the outward ship direction, but at an angle. Another thing which we observe is looking from top, the spheres are slewed in a clockwise direction. If you see they are slewed by an angle of 10 degrees in a clockwise direction. Looking from top, the spheres are turned in a clockwise direction. So this gives us the second inference here that coefficient delta and coefficient echo are of the same sign because we are aware when delta and echo are of the same sign, the spheres are slewed clockwise. If delta and echo are of the opposite signs, the spheres are slewed anti-clockwise. So that is the second inference which we get. First inference, this ship has coefficient delta as well as echo. Second inference, coefficient delta and coefficient echo are having the same sign. Find the heading on which the sphere correction should be done on this particular ship. Now always remember uh, the fundamental that whenever we are doing any sphere correction, it may be coefficient delta, it may be coefficient echo or it may be the combined correction for delta and echo. 
in all these cases whenever we are doing any sphere correction we have to ensure that the spheres are at a intercardinal direction from the compass location that means the sphere should be either northeast of the compass or southeast of the compass or southwest of the compass or northwest of the compass whenever the correction is being done the heading of the ship should be such that the spheres are at a direction which is a intercardinal direction from the compass location so for doing the combined correction also we need to take the spheres to a intercardinal direction now let's assume we are trying to take the starboard corrector sphere to the southeasterly direction of the compass now if you want to take the starboard corrector sphere southeast of the compass that basically means that the sphere has to be turned clockwise the sphere has to be turned or slewed clockwise by an angle of 35 degrees it is right now at an direction of 100 and we need to take it to a direction of southeast which is 135 so we have to turn it clockwise by an angle of 35 degrees now that means the vessel has to swing to the starboard side turning clockwise looking from top means swinging to starboard the vessel has to swing to the starboard side by an angle of 35 degrees now if the ship swings to starboard by an angle of 35 degrees the heading on which the ship would be that time is 035 degrees so the heading of the ship will be 035 degrees when the ship is heading 035 the starboard corrector sphere is going to come exactly southeast of the compass the port side corrector will obviously automatically go to the northwest direction the spheres are in reciprocally opposite direction so if the starboard sphere comes southeast of the compass the port corrector sphere comes northwest of the compass so this is the heading on which the correction can be done now there is one more possibility which is available to us and that possibility is instead of taking the starboard corrector sphere to southeast direction we can also take the starboard corrector sphere to the northeast direction that is also a intercardinal direction so the starboard corrector sphere can be taken to the northeast direction also now for doing that the sphere has to be turned anti clockwise by an angle of 55 degrees northeast direction represents 045 the sphere is at a direction of 100 so it has to be turned anti clockwise by an angle of 55 degrees this basically means that the ship needs to swing to port let me show you with an arrow you can see this red color arrow showing that the ship needs to swing in the port direction by an angle of 55 degrees and if the ship swings to the port side by 55 degrees the heading of the ship will be 305 degrees So if the vessel heads 305 the starboard corrector com corrector sphere will come northeast of the compass and the correction can be done the port corrector obviously will come in the southwesterly direction then so both the spheres will be lying in the northeast southwest direction of the compass so we have obtained two options one is heading 035 the second one is heading 305 now if you look carefully even if the ship goes on a heading which is reciprocal of 035 reciprocal of 035 reciprocal of 035 would be 215 even on that heading the spheres will be lying at an intercardinal direction you see at 035 heading the starboard sphere was southeast of the compass 
when the ship goes to 215 heading reciprocally opposite heading this starboard sphere will go to northwest of the compass reciprocally opposite direction so the correction is also possible when the ship is heading 215 and the same applies to 305 heading also if the ship goes on a heading reciprocal of 305 which comes out to be 125 degrees even on this heading the correction can be done so these are the four headings which we have obtained 035 125 215 125, and 305 all these headings are perpendicular to each other at a 90 degree difference from each other and the correction for combined correction for coefficient d and e can be made on any one of these headings so the answer is obtained as heading has to be 035 125 215 2, and 305 any one of these headings the correction can be made the location of the flender bar now you see we have the binacle here this is the compass compass bowl and uh, then we saw in permanent b that we use four and aft magnet placed in these trays now the flinder bar is placed in this housing you see this cylindrical housing which is there it is fitted forward of the compass so why it is fitted forward of the compass because it is compensating or correcting the magnetism of the funnel the funnel is fitted aft of the compass on a normal merchant vessel you will have the funnel aft of the compass so to counteract it the flinder bar is placed forward of the compass you can see the flinder bar in this particular diagram also this cylinder which you see represents the flinder bar you can see it is mentioned here so this is the housing which you are seeing this is the casing and in this casing inside we have the flinders bar the use of the soft iron bar and the wooden bar for filling up the flinders bar so you see this is the flinder bar present on a ship and this is basically the casing in which the bar would be placed the maker supplies us a soft iron bar in these dimensions you see one piece is for 305 mm the next one is 152 mm 76 38 then two pieces for 19 mm and along with the soft iron bar he also provides a wooden bar of same dimensions you see we have the pieces with exactly same dimensions so first of all compass adjuster evaluates what length of the flinder bar he requires let us assume that on a particular ship the compass adjuster has ascertained that he needs to use these two pieces 305 mm and 152 mm what he does now is leaving these two pieces 305 and 152 305 and 152 he will pick up all the other pieces of the wooden bar so you see all these pieces with a green tick mark other than the ones which are required other than 305 and 152 he will pick up all the wooden pieces 76 38 19 and 19 and he will pick and drop these pieces in the flinder bar casing so let us put these pieces here you see all these four pieces coming here 19 mm 19 mm 38 mm and 76 mm all these four pieces coming here these are the wooden bar pieces now once these wooden pieces are placed at the bottom of the flinder bar casing he now picks up the required soft iron pieces 152 mm and 305 mm and he drops these pieces into the flinder bar so you can see this 152 mm piece and the 305 mm piece dropped in the flinder bar and now you can see the top end of the soft iron bar will be in level with the compass card or as required so the bottom portion is filled using the wooden pieces thus making the flinder bar 
correction plus d sin twice the cos plus e cos twice the cos this is a very very important formula in uh, magnetic compass and it helps you to understand the basic fundamental behind the coefficients how does it help to understand that just to give you an example in this formula if you see coefficient a is not connected to the cores at all the contribution which coefficient a is providing to the deviation of the shape is not connected so what you instead do this particular is independent of the course of the ship may be on northerly heading or easterly southerly westerly any heading the contribution of coefficient a is going to remain the same let's uh, try to discuss or to is the coefficient b also now if you look carefully b coefficient b its contribution to the deviation now it is on the that means the contribution of coefficient b on northerly heading is nil zero what if the ship goes on a easterly heading on a easterly heading the course becomes 90 sin of 90 becomes 1 which is the maximum value and the contribution of b towards the deviation becomes the maximum so contribution to the deviation because of coefficient b is zero on northerly heading when the ship is on east or west heading is maximum so uh, in the next part of our magnetic compass we will be discussing all these coefficients one by one now so now beta whatever doubts are coming to your mind please share them one by one